Jay's all new with Charlie Sheen, comedian Harlan Williams, and go Jay walking. And tomorrow, Jay's got Josh Shoot Me's David Spade. Then on Conan, Robert Urich, all new tonight. Good to have you close to the home. We're back at 8.30 on this Tuesday morning. It's the 11th day of September, the year 2001. And we've got a nice crowd on a beautiful early fall morning here in Manhattan. We hope the weather's pretty where you're waking up as well. And I think that music you're listening to is once again Macy Gray, who's going to be performing here on Friday. Hard to hear out here with the crowd and all the If it's not Macy noise. Gray, it's an enormous screw-up down in our audio booth. <laughs> yeah. But we yeah. think it is. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Anyway, outside Studio 1A, I came correct along with Matt Lauer. And coming up in this half hour, Matt, Harry Belafonte is going to be here. He's going to be talking about a new project that he's worked on for years. It's finally come to fruition. It's an anthology of black music, and it's called The Long Road to Freedom. Also, we're going to talk about Howard Hughes, the reclusive billionaire, died alone except for the people he paid to be with him. There have been a lot of books written about him, but now author uh, Richard Hack has written what he calls the definitive biography of Howard Hughes. We'll talk to Mr. Hack about that in just a few minutes. He's such an interesting figure, so that Unusual must be a fascinating so many ways. book. Absolutely. Anyway, lots to get to, but before we do, we've got another check of the weather from Mr. Roker. Al, it is such a pretty morning, it isn't is it? It's a perfect fall morning here, although it's not fall yet, so <laughs> it's still a perfect summer morning. And uh, good advice, hug a nurse today. Where are you from? Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown, what are you doing Saint here? Elizabeth. Just hanging out? Just on vacation. Who are you here with? My son and my husband. All right. <laughs> well, you're sandwiched. Yes, it's food. a mom nurse sandwich. We like that. And I got a buddy over here. He's going, Al, show me some love. I, I just love, I love the hair. The hair. Doing, I'm showing you some love. What are you okay. doing? We're, we're here with Urban Air. For, we're doing uh, uh, AIDS awareness within the teen community, within the minority communities, the Latin American, the black communities. It's been an increase in AIDS. We're trying to aware the teens of what's going on. Good Life to be. All right. Good All advice. Right. Thank you very much. I like this though. That's ah. happening. I want to do that. Ah, you know? No problem. Let's take a look. Show you what's going on. Oh, sorry. There's a. Yeah, hold on. Let me just see here. Yeah. See? <laughs> That's what it would look like. Much better. Let's check your weather. See what's going on. For today, we've got uh, a lot of cool weather in the northern states. We've got some hot weather continuing in the southwest and 80s as you get into the southeast with a lot of rain, up to seven inches of rain in parts of Florida. Partly sunny in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle today. Sunshine in 75. Sunny in the northeast and low humidity. Speaking of hair, what's the deal here? Charles Worthington's big hair, girl. Well, there you go. You certainly are. That's what's going on around the country. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Well, we've had a fresh, cool, dry air mass move in overnight. Good morning. I'm meteorologist Tom Kieran. We're up to 67 degrees here in northwest and comfortably dry with a nice breeze coming in at about 5 to 10 this morning. It may get a little gusty this afternoon, uh, maybe 10 to 20 miles an hour with bright sunshine, highs reaching the low 80s. And we've got a cool evening on tap tonight. Ought to be widespread 50s for lows. And during the day tomorrow, the upper 70s for highs. Then Thursday, partly sunny. Could have a passing shower Thursday evening. Otherwise, dry weather all the way into the weekend. Let's head down to Washington. Hey, Weller, look who's here. Mr. Peanut. I love Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut is here. Is he salt free and dry roasted? I, I, no, well, he's, he, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't come out of his shell yet. He just. Uh, <laughs> hey, have oh, you ever shucks. done anything for Habitat for Humanity? Yes. Did you, did you ever take a hammer and saw You nail bet. It? Yes, we did. We did. In fact, the Today Show did it a couple of months ago well, uh, up in Harlem. I thought you'd get a big kick out of this. Jimmy Carter, one of the nicest people in the whole wide world. A beautiful man. Done so many great things. Here's his. Where was it? Did you see his picture? Was it up there? And there's it. There you go. And some of his friends. And they're having their 25th anniversary. Can you believe that? Indianapolis, Indiana, this coming Saturday, the 15th. 25 years of helping humanity by building them a home. Can't beat that. And the people that actually live in the house helped to build it, too. Check it out. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to Habitat, one of the great, great organizations. On the back of our smuckers jar, Alex LeBlanc of Waltham, Mass. Independent fellow loves being around people. Fondest memory is going to the airport with his friends in the 20s and flying with student pilots in open cockpit planes. How about that handsome dude? Molly Holtzberg of Coconut Creek, Florida is 100 years old, loves to read, loves theater, discussing politics, and loves a good party and being with people. A party animal, Molly, you old fox. Sidney Johnson of Glenmara, Louisiana is 101, wonderful homemaker, enjoyed taking care of her family, married a farmer, and loved it. Eat good down on the farm. 
Lona Snodgrass, Charleston, West Virginia, 104, still lives in her own house, likes to watch television, loves stories about the good old days. She is pretty, very pretty lady. Edith Chitnick, Chittick of Westlake, Ohio, attributes her longevity to strong faith, a strong spirit, always puts family first and loves golf, and she is a Greg Norman fan extraordinaire. Pretty hair. Finally, Charles Hill, Los Angeles, California. Look at that. He is handsome. He can be an actor. Good looking, smart. Good looking, good looking man. Attributes his longevity and good health to living a stress free life. Loves going to the beach and watching his horses win at the track. How about that? Man knows his business. Anyway, happy birthday to all. Now back to Matt in Little Old New York. All right, Willard, thank you very much. Coming up, Katie talks to Harry Belafonte. But first, this is today on NBC. Harrison. My Wednesday's Child Reports have helped hundreds of local children find loving adoptive homes. And now you can help too with just a few simple steps. Join the Freddie Mac Foundation and NBC4 for the 12th annual Wednesday's Child 5K Race for Adoption. It's on Sunday, September 16th. Come run or walk to show your support for the thousands of local foster children still waiting to be adopted. Registration is free and there are great prizes. Log on to NBC4.com for more information. And thank you. Oh, the wonderful thing about children is it never occurs to them that their dreams might not come true. My dream has come true. With hard work and some good financial advice, I just opened my third child care center. We take care of hundreds of children every day. Our children are our future. They just don't know it yet. Smart financial services from Mutual of Omaha. Helping plan successful futures for over 90 years. Why do the four giant Bell phone monopolies want toes and dingles so badly? How about this? Section 4A states, Neither the FCC nor any state shall have authority to regulate the rates, charges, terms, or conditions for any high-speed data service. Toes and Dingle will turn the four Bell giants loose on America and then prohibit the FCC and all 50 states from protecting us. So, this is why our parents told us to read the fine print. Just listen to my voice. On September 28th. Look in my eyes. On this quiet street, a stranger will arrive and pass his power to another. From the author of The Green Mile. Find the queen of hearts. And the director of Shine. Tell me what you see. This one here. Anthony Hopkins. Hearts in Atlantis. Rated PG-13. Sneak preview September 15th. Starts September 28th. Nearly 50 years ago, entertainer Harry Belafonte embarked on an extraordinary project. He set out to research and record the music of black Americans from the period of their earliest arrival in the New World in the 17th century up through the spirituals, blues, and folk music of the early 20th century. The work was completed 30 years ago, but it's only now that music lovers can enjoy this collection of songs. It's called The Long Road to Freedom, an anthology of black music. Belafonte was principal producer and one of many artists featured on this 80 song box set. Well, it's free grace, free grace, free grace, my loving sister, free grace, oh, free grace, I'm new born again. All right now, gather round the rails, boys. Turn that rail to your stomach, huh. head high, throw it away. <laughs> oh, white man. He called me lazy. Work like me, he soon go crazy. White man, no! get me no! all the time. Harry Belafonte, it's a pleasure to see you. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, to say that this has been a project that's been long in the making is a bit of an understatement. <laughs> you started working on this back in 1954. Yeah. Tell me how it came about. Well, America was just the threshold of a new period in its, in, in its evolution. Brown versus the Board of Education had just come through the Supreme Court. There was an awakening to the whole issue of race on a, on a level that America was just about to embark on that was very new. And I often felt that if people really understood more about one another, life could perhaps be dealt with in a more comfortable and uh, meaningful way. And the best way to know one is through one's culture. And our music held so much 
of our history. And since I was an artist, since I had the platform of music, why not dig into our history through our musical expression and let people hear the songs that spoke to our trials and tribulations, our journey from the, from the shores of Africa to the times of slavery, to the period of the Civil War, to the antebellum period, and the blues and the city and the rural. And the, it was just a, a huge canvas uh, of material that I thought America would would delight in. Oh, it's such an incredibly rich history. And I understand that a lot of these songs were actually in an RCA vault for some 30 years. <laughs> Why? Well, when I originally started the project, RCA and Reader's Digest were the two companies behind uh, promoting it. And both of them at the end of the, of the recording dissolved their relationship. So we were left there with no home. And I waited, I thought it would take about maybe two or three years to find another place to lay it off. But it took 30 years, and now BMG found the archives, uh, found the material in their archives, because they bought RCA. And in buying RCA, they inherited this volume of work. So and so they called me and asked me to come on board and have it released. And, and I know you're thrilled. We have another example of some of the stuff in the, some of the music in the anthology. Let's take another listen. I know that you have said that much of the music we listen to today echoes some of the music we heard, say, a hundred years ago or, or, or more. What's astounding is that almost all of American culture, regardless of race, has most of its resonance deeply rooted in African music. And, uh, and we take an awful lot for granted, whether you're in rock or you're in rap or you're in the Broadway theater, or almost any, any, any avenue of musical expression in America, you'll find resonance of Africa throughout the American culture. And we were talking before we went on about what a fabulous teaching tool this could be for kids all across you know, the country to learn so much about history and about ourselves through the music that we've you know, enjoyed for, for hundreds of years. And remarkable men and women participated in this. Leonard DePaul, Sonny Terry, Brownie McGee, Bessie Jones, great artist by the name of Charles White, who did the artwork, and the text written by Marie Evans, a professor from University of Indiana. I think the work is not only scholarly, but it's really, it's very, there's a humanity to this that I think people really enjoy. You must be very proud of it. Before, before we go, uh, Harry, I want to ask you quickly about the World Conference Against Racism that was held last week in South Africa. You attended on behalf of UNICEF. You criticized the United States for pulling out uh, when, when uh, both the U.S. and Israel withdrew over uh, condemnations of Israel. Um, disappointed with the United States about that, aren't you? Yes, because I believe that uh, the world is really in need of compassion. The world is really in need of voices that will come to the table with reason and lead people to a new level of thinking. And the United States, which dominates so much of the world order, I believe has a responsibility to lead the world to a new level of thought, or at least open up debate so that new information can come into the discourse so we may be able to shape policies that are a little bit richer and the policies we've been applying all along that doesn't seem to be taking us out of the abyss of violence, uh, killing, anger, rage. And I think we should be less arrogant about how we use our resources. Obviously, delegates uh, left with sort of instructions on how to improve the situation in their respective countries. But do you think that this conference will really have an impact on the average person in the world in terms of racism, intolerance, etc.? Yes, I do. I believe it'll be a while before a lot of the residents from this gets into the mainstream experience, but it, it's a beginning and remarkable men and women from all over the world of enormous intelligence sat at the table and debated issues that were most volatile. And I think conclusions were reached that will set a platform for future 
encounter. Well, let's hope so. Harry Belafonte, as I said, it's a thrill to, to be with you. Thanks so much for coming in, and best of luck with your project. The, the anthology, once again, is called The Long Road to Freedom. Thank you, Katie. Looks wonderful. Up next, a new look at billionaire Howard Hughes. But first, this is Today on NBC. Top drawer, the interior design store, is having one of their famous, wild, irresistible clearance events. Absolutely everything in our enormous showroom has been reduced. Select from our multi-million dollar stock of unique home furnishings from around the world. Almost everything is available for immediate delivery. Don't delay. Hurry into Top Drawer, your interior design store, where the smart shoppers buy. Being in business, I know you've got to have a plan to succeed. That's why, as a candidate for governor, I've offered a detailed action plan for Virginia's future. To improve education and transportation, create jobs, preserve open space and protect our environment. We can do it with more effective management and real fiscal responsibility. To find out more, call or visit our website, because you deserve more than political promises. You deserve a plan and results. And that's what my campaign for governor is all about. The Civic from Honda. Hey guys, can you help us? We need directions. It comes with an extraordinarily well insulated cabin. Why is it so hard to meet chicks anyway? The window! I do not know. You Amazing, but true. While supplies last, get special APR financing as low as 3.9% for 36 months on 2001 Civics. I'm Dr. Mark Groban, Chairman of the Mamsey Health Plan's MDIPA and Optimum Choice. We've partnered with the American Heart Association to bring you important heart health information. One of the things I learned to do was to take my medication exactly as my doctor instructed me to. If you don't, your condition could worsen, requiring further medical treatment and costing you more money. To start your way to a heart-healthy life, join us for the American Heart Walk Saturday, October 20th. For more information, call this number. Howard Hughes lived the American dream. He was wealthy beyond belief, dated beautiful movie stars, and made record-breaking flights. But the man who could have it all for years just wanted to be left alone. Because of that, much of his life has remained a mystery until now. Author Richard Hack uncovers America's first billionaire in his new book, simply called Hughes. Richard Hack, good morning. Good simply, to see you. Thank you very much. You, you you say, I'm fine, thank you. You say this is a different perspective on Howard Hughes because the other books have been written based on stories told by people who knew him. You think this is his point of view. How could that be? Well, I made the effort to try to get inside his mind. Uh, this is, a, a, you know, he was America's first million, a billionaire, and he was a famous film producer after all. He did, you'll recall, uh, the, the Outlaw with Jane Russell in the press, and he w won the first Oscar award for the best comedy film. He also flew around the world setting records. He also uh, bought half of Las Vegas, and he also was America's number one defense contractor, and he dated all those beautiful women that you know, uh, uh, Catherine Hepburn, right. Randy Davis, Landa Turner. But the fact was, this is a man that absolutely was elusive. To everyone who knew him, it, they elusive. knew him differently. So you interview someone, and they will give you a different story each time. He demanded his privacy. He was obsessive about it, and yet... Yes. He had the people who work for him keep detailed records of right. every move he made from the time exactly. he ate to the time he went to the bathroom. Why? This is the, this is the story. He did not have that done. They did it so they could keep track and refer to it because he was so compulsively controlling that when he would talk to them, they'd have to know exactly what he was talking about. He had an incredible memory. Did so he know they were keeping these records? No. They, he did not know they had the records, and when he found out about it, he wanted them all destroyed as they were going. He thought they were destroyed. The fact that they weren't destroyed would have killed him if he hadn't already and, been And dead. it's some of those documents that were kept about him that you scoured to yes, write this book. Uh, over 110,000 pages I rifled through. You say he was known as a great ladies' man. However, comma, you say perhaps that was a bit of a myth, that he was not all that great a lover. He dated Catherine Hepburn. Yes, he certainly did. She moved in with him at, right. at one point, brought the maid, the butler, and the three dogs. Mm -hmm. Why did she move out? What happened between the two of them? 
Well, she found out that he was dating Betty Davis. That sort of ha puts a crimp on things, you know, when you think you're the only one. He proposed to all these ladies, mind you. And then they'd all find out that he had exactly. somebody else on well, the when, side. When Ginger Rogers found out, she threw a bag full of jewelry at him, only to learn the next day that he also repossessed her station wagon that he had given her. We have a photo that I think was the last picture ever taken of Howard Hughes, and the weird thing is it was taken 25 years before he died. That's why right. Did, why did he mm -hmm. retreat so thoroughly from the public? Well, for one thing, he didn't have to deal with them. He had so much money that he could lay naked in a bed, blacked out room, talking on the telephone and do all his business. Everybody else was out there doing it. And on top of that, he was a sociopath. He didn't like people. He didn't like even his aides, who were the only people he saw, he didn't allow to talk to them. You talk about the cleanliness issue, the fear of germs. Yes. In, perhaps a, a result of the way his mother oh, raised him. Definitely. She would wash him down with lye soap every morning. She would check his teeth like a horse. She looked in the toilet at his feces to see if there was tapeworms. But mind you, it was a time that there were... This is a special report from News Channel 4. Good morning, everybody. I am Jane Hanson in the News Channel 4 uh, studio this morning to bring you some news. We are looking at a picture now of the World Trade Center, and we have an eyewitness on the telephone who tells us that he has seen an airplane crash into the World Trade Center. His name is Tony Arrigo. He is on East 12th Street. Tony, can you please tell us what yes, you Yes, I witnessed? can tell you what happened. I was taking the garbage out of the building when we heard this roaring engines coming. We looked up and there was a plane. Next thing you know, we heard boom. We ran up to the corner and hit right into the World Trade Center. Tony, can, center. You, can you tell us what kind of an airplane is I, it? It had to be a 737 and had to hit the World Trade Center. It was a big, big plane. Okay, and what do you see at this point? Oh, smoke and screaming and, uh, I mean, screaming engines and all the fire ants and police departments are all, all traveling down that way. Oh, my God almighty, the black smoke all over the place. I hope nobody, there's got to be somebody killed in it and poor people that went to work. Well, Tony, we don't have any confirmation from any officials of this happening. Just repeat again, you were walking, you were just going outside. I was bringing east. the garbage out to the freight entrance when we, we heard this in roaring engine. We looked up and there was the plane. Next thing we know, in a matter of seconds, we heard a boom. We went to the corner, and there it was, right in the middle of the World Trade Center. Where are you standing right now, Tony? I'm right in the building right now. Okay, and what do you see at this point? Oh, people all staring up there, looking at it and all. Oh, my God, the smoke is coming out, black billow smoke. Okay, you can see we are, we are physically looking at one of our sky cams right now. We can see billowing smoke from the top of the World Trade Center, Tony. Yeah. Um, are there other people that are around you at this point? Is everybody in pretty much of a state of shock? Oh, of course they are. People are all in shock. The people in the building are in shock going out. My God almighty, this is a real disaster. This is, this is worse than the one that hit the Empire State Building back in 1939 or 38, whenever that was. Okay. Uh, Tony, how long ago did you witness this happening? Oh, come on. Ten minutes ago. Ten minutes ago? That's about all. Okay. And, at, at, and, and uh, again, we are now we're putting our camera in. We are pushing our camera into the top of the World Trade Center, and we can see that there appears to be some uh, fairly significant damage to oh, the top of it. Oh, yes, there's got to be at least 15 floors that were hit with the plane. Uh, Tony, um, you know, I, I'm keeping asking you to describe this for me because well, as I'm telling... what happened was, I was taking the garbage out of the building to go into the freight entrance to dump it. When we heard, when I heard this big roaring going up, what's going on? I looked up and there's this plane zooming right over, or not too, not too high up. And then the next thing I hear in a few seconds was boom. So we I ran up to the corner, and there it was, right in the middle of the World Trade Center. Tony, um, we are looking at the World Trade Center as we speak. I can witness that there appears to be some things falling off of the uh, building as we are looking at it. Um, oh, it's got, listen, it's got to hit at least seven, eight, fifteen stories it had it banged into. Uh-huh. Oh, and it's halfway in the, in the building. Okay. And if, if uh, again, let me reiterate what we appear to be watching. Again, we have uh, only an eyewitness and only what we are showing you on our live sky cam at this moment. But there is, does appear to be a plane of some sort that has crashed into the World Trade Center. If you look, it appears the top. Uh, I, right I can't, the, almost on the top. Almost, almost on the, at the, the top. top. Okay. Three and quarters up. 
Uh, yeah, at least three quarters, if not, uh, you know, very close to the top. But we can see that the building, uh, there is a, a lot of structural damage oh, and there is a lot of smoke. Structure. Yes, ma'am. I, I just hope nobody got, oh, I wish somebody, I wish they weren't there. Oh, my God, this is a real disaster if anybody's gone to work. Tony, thank you very much. We appreciate your sharing this, what you oh, witnessed with pleasure, us. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Sir. I, I'm at 31 East 12th Street. Okay, we are now going to go to another eyewitness, um, Ed Buda. Ed, can you please tell us what you witnessed? Uh, all right, I was ready to get on the ferry, and people started yelling and screaming, and smoke and flames were coming out towards the top of the building. And uh, I'm still on a ferry now, and I can see it. Uh, smoke is coming out of both sides, so whatever went into it, it, it looks like it just went right through it. Did it, you? It's really, it's really bad. A lot of people. I just heard somebody say that they thought it was a 737 that went through the building. Mm -hmm. But you, at this point, have you cannot physically see any remnants of an airplane or anything such as that. Can you not, Ed? Ed, are you still on the telephone with me? Uh, that was Ed Buda, another eyewitness who was on a ferry, and apparently we've lost our contact with Ed at this hour. Uh, but um, take a look at these pictures. They are live pictures, our sky cam that is looking at one of the World Trade Center buildings from lower Manhattan. You can see that there has been some sort of damage to this building at this point. We do not know exactly what happened. We have had an eyewitness named Tony Arrigo, who was on East 12th Street, looked up into the sky, and he says it appears to him that an airplane struck the upper portion of that building. We are now going to go to Mary Corza on the telephone, who is another eyewitness. Mary, can you tell us what you saw? Mary? Mary, are you there? I am here. Mary, can you please tell us where you, what you saw and where you are? I'm at 14th Street and 5th Avenue, and we saw a plane flying low overhead, which caught, caught all of our attention. We looked up. It was making a beeline for the World Trade Center. It was very low, extremely low. Not a big plane like an, air, you know, an airliner, uh, but not a tiny propeller plane either, a small, small jet plane. Uh, we, we can now see flames coming from the building. It appeared to you that the airplane was directly aimed at the World Trade Center? It did appear that way to many of us that were here on the ground, yes. Okay. And when and it hit, there was, a, you know, the big boom, a big cloud of smoke, some flames, and then mostly smoke. It just started flaming now. Have you witnessed any people coming out of the building? Have they been able to tell you anything at this point? No, I'm all the way up on 14th Street, so I can't see the building down below. Uh, it was only a, uh, maybe a minute or two before you could hear sirens coming, so they did alert people right away, obviously, but uh, you probably have a better fix on how many floors were damaged. It looks like quite a few floors. Yeah, from what we're looking at, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I would say 15 to 18 stories, and there is uh, debris falling off that building yeah, as we see, speak. You did see shattered glass raining down after it hit, and, uh, you know, like I said, a big cloud of smoke. Um, but you couldn't tell much more from 14th Street. Now, we had an earlier eyewitness that told us he thought it appeared to be a 737. Your, what you saw was a small, perhaps twin-engine airplane? No, not a twin-engine. It was a jet um, of medium to smallish proportions. Not a big airliner, though. Okay. Um, okay, so it appeared to be a... And, and what... What pro you heard this sound. I'm just trying to understand what happened. You heard a sound. That's what compelled you to look up into the sky. Yeah, you could hear you could hear a jet coming overhead, and it sounded low. So many of us looked up to see what was you know because it sounded so close. We all looked up, mm -hmm. and like I said, it didn't look like it was swerving or out of control. It was going steadily lower. Uh, it was you know definitely going steadily lower, but it wasn't dropping uh, like nose first or anything that would make you think that the plane was in trouble. Right. Which uh, then, of course, raises the question exactly what was that airplane doing and, and how did this occur? Right. Uh, but the airplane, I, the airplane did not appear in, to be in trouble to you. I, I, don't know, I don't know enough about airplanes to know what it should look like, but it wasn't nose down or it wasn't swerving up and down or left and right. It was making a straight, steady decline towards the, the World Trade Center. Uh, Mary, I'm hearing what, is so what sounds to be an awful lot of people that are either crying or uh, sobbing or something in the background. That, that's my baby wondering why I'm still standing here. But there are a lot of us who are shaking or in, with tears coming down our faces because it's mind-boggling to think about how many people are up there who, you know, aren't anymore. Um, exactly. And uh, Mary, again, thank you very much. I, I appreciate your comments with us.
no this problem. morning, Thank you. and um, I'm certain it was quite a frightening sight to have watched this. Let me reiterate what we think you're looking at. And again, we have no confirmation of exactly what happened, but it is obviously clear that something has hit the World Trade Center, shattering um, the windows and much of the building from what appears to be perhaps the, fifth, the, the top 15 to 20 stories of the building. We can see thick black smoke. We have seen flames erupting from it. Um, we can tell you that we've had a couple of eye, we've uh, three eyewitnesses on the telephone. Uh, Mary Koza, who's been on the phone with us, has just told us that it appeared to be a medium-sized jet. She uh, heard a sound, a buzzing sound, looked up and saw, she saw this airplane going into the building. Now, uh, Mary said she did not know if the, the airplane did not appear to her to be in any kind of trouble, but again, she obviously said to us she did not know enough about airplanes to know exactly what happened. We obviously at this moment are trying to find out exactly what did happen. There are numerous emergency, uh, emergency vehicles and officials that have raced to this scene. We do not know um, in terms of injuries or fatalities we have absolutely no information about that at this point in time all we can tell you is that something has obviously crashed into the World Trade Center and our eyewitnesses have told us it was an airplane of some sort there have been some reports it might have been a 737 others have told us it could be a, a medium-sized jet of some sort um, and again we had a, a gentleman tell us that I he was that. simply taken out the garbage and um, yeah, I can talk. And, uh, and and that he looked up in the sky and he saw this happen and of course there was a lot of shock and uh, a lot of sadness from the people who looked up into the sky and witnessed this just a short time ago you can see we have we have uh, chopper four is now on the scene april and monica what can you tell us from your vantage point well what from we we can see right here as we were coming up the hudson river we can see thick black smoke indicating the fire is still going on right now in the world trade center for as far as the eye can see and you can tell right here at the top of this tower there's a huge gaping hole flames still inside thick black smoke still coming out we have not been able to see what if any kind of an aircraft is inside the building this is the best vantage point right here and as you can see just a huge gaping hole throughout the entire side of this tower right now april uh can you uh, can you see down to the street to see what might be going on down there are there signs of of uh, uh, the people that have evacuated the building um what what can you tell can you see anything down there or are you simply not close enough at this point we are simply not close enough right at this point uh we are following the smoke in the air right now there are several boats and watercraft as we can see in the river right now we'll try to get a better vantage point and see what we can see on the ground it's a little difficult from the air because the buildings kind of shadow the streets but no doubt a lot of activity on the ground right now and um, in terms of the firefighting capabilities when you get up to this high level uh, I assume the firefighters have got to get up there and uh, you know fight it from inside oh uh, if you're taking a look now, you can wow. see that we've just had another explosion, and that is considerably lower. And is that in the other building? Is that, that what I'm witnessing? That, that apparently does look like it is in the other building at this point. And that looks to be lower, which means there, um, you know, obviously there are considerable numbers of stories above that explosion that we just saw. Perhaps we can get another look from one of our sky cams that can take a different angle. Yes, you can tell that it now appears that both buildings um, are Back off. suffering some kind of damage this morning. My colleague um, Glenn Walker has just joined me here in the studio and Glenn um, I don't know if you've off. received any other information but perhaps you can again um, go over what we do know at this point which is pretty much visual and what eyewitnesses have told us. Well I would hate to speculate but um, yeah, that looks like a completely separate incident right there. I mean it, this this building has been the subject of terrorist attacks in the past, and uh, I certainly want to want to speculate at this time, but that is a separate explosion. Yes, it is. In the other building. Now we have tried to get a hold of the Port Authority, which manages the building. We haven't been able to get an answer. Uh, we did call MTA, and the MTA says a subway service, as of right now, is continuing. So that's not a problem because it's obviously very below. But I imagine that will change very quickly after what we just witnessed. That was a dramatic explosion. Again, it was in the separate tower than the one to where the plane just crashed into 
about a half hour ago. Yes, and um, again, there was no sign of any airplane close to that explosion, no. nor was there any reason to believe it would be re that it could have been an, an after effect or a repercussion of the original, uh, what we believe was an airplane going into one of the Twin Towers, and both of them now appear to be on fire. We have no word of casualties, injuries, fatalities. What you can see is heavy, heavy black smoke. You can see flames. How far down do you think that goes on the second of the uh, World Trade Center I would say buildings. that is probably maybe seven, eight floors below from where the plane crashed into the, the original well, I was fire that we saw in the separate building. But that, as I said, that looked like it just looked like an explosion. It had nothing to do with the plane crashing into the into the first building. Exactly, and of course there are. Uh, thousands of employees in those buildings. It is a regular work day. We have no information about anybody who is inside there and uh, what kind of shape they might be in. We at this point are seeking confirmation of exactly what happened, particularly what just happened um, with this second expl apparent explosion. And I don't, don't even know. We're, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at the tape of this last explosion. Maybe we can uh, pick up something here. We, were, as we said we were talking about what was going on. And then suddenly there was a big explosion in the second building. There it is. There it is right there. Com seems to be completely unrelated to the first one. I didn't catch it, but, it, but I, gotta, I have to say it looks like something it looks like went some into the building. Yes, Possibly another airplane. Um, well, may perhaps from the other side, because we've, we've only got the right. one vantage point here. Um, what we can tell you about the building on the right is that eyewitnesses have told us that I, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. We, we, we'll we have another witness on the phone. Arlene Morris, are you there? I am. Well, well, can you tell us what you saw? Yes, I was sitting at my desk and I heard this big boom, a loud sound. And when we, I looked out the window, the top floor on the World Trade Center, there's flames just coming down, crashing down to the ground on the west side. All the cars and they were like running into each other, and the flames just started coming down real hard. Then mm -hmm. another sound exploded again, what? another impact. What building are you in? How far I'm in, away? I'm in the World Finance Center, and my window's the opposite side to the World Trade Center. I'm in the C Tower. Did you just see another explosion? No, I here? heard it because I'm holding on, on the phone with you. So I heard another big boom again. It just exploded again. Do you see people leaving the building? We left. Everybody left already. I'm the only one here on my floor. I right. got to get out. But what can you tell us about the, the building? Can you see people on the ground from the, the, from the two? At the bottom, yes. And then the fire, the fire brigade, and they, they came. Everything else, they're downstairs. They're right now. Do um, you see people that are injured? What, what can no, you no, 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 I can't. I'm on the 28th floor. Okay. Yeah, so it's minute to my vision. I really can't see too much. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, Arlene, and please get out of that building and thank seek you. safety. Thank you. I'm leaving right now. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Be safe. We have another uh, another you. witness, Janice Huff, on the telephone. I'm not sure if it's our Janice Huff, but uh, she apparently was a witness to, Janice, to, the, to the second you, explosion. You saw this? Where are you? No, no, no. Listen, I'm watching TV right now. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, I can see the pictures that we have of the building, the first building, the one with the tower on the top. And as I'm watching it and you're talking, I see a plane flying behind the other tower, and I see it getting closer and closer to the building, and I'm thinking, is that a plane? And it was, and all of a sudden, I see this explosion in the other tower. So there was another plane. So there was another plane with a second I mean, I, explosion. Well, from, from what I am look, looking at on television, from the angle that I was looking. Uh, here's a replay right here, I believe. When I was watching uh, this, looking at the first tower, I okay. noticed that there was a small plane oh. coming around the side of the building. You see it there on the right? I you see, see it? it. I see so it. I see it. I see it right there. There it is right there. I is see it. it. And then it goes boom right there. Watch. That's there it. it is. You're absolutely right. Oh, my goodness. So I don't know if it's a helicopter or a plane, but it was certainly flying and it went right into the building. It was a plane. I can, can we show that again, please? I. I, I, I did. I clearly did not notice that the first time. Right. I think we need to take a look at that again. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, obviously what we are looking at are the twin towers of the World Trade Center in flames. We know nothing yet about the number of people, or the, what has exactly happened there. Uh, we we can only tell you what we have witnessed and what eyewitnesses have told us. Now here we're going to look at this tape again. Here it comes. I think we're. I think we definitely have to open this up to speculation. This could definitely could be a deliberate attack. Yes. At okay. This now point. up on the right hand side of our screen, let's take a look, and we will show you what we what what Janice has pointed out to us. There it comes. Let's. 
It's not it's in the not screen in yet. yet. It's not in the screen yet. Up there on top, there, there it is. is. You see it see coming it? down. Do you see that coming in? You can see that. It looks... It goes between the two buildings. And I'm, it, it's coming right there. Right there. Yep. Right there. There it is. There. It's right for it. Obviously, we know nothing more than what we're looking at. Uh, we should tell you at this point that all three New York City airports have been shut down. Uh. Um, we know nothing about what who or what might be responsible if indeed this was an attack. Um, again, we've had eyewitnesses on the telephone talking about the first explosion. Um, we had two people that told us that they saw an airplane, medium-sized airplane, going into the first tower, and then we just showed you what we saw we on saw the that. videotape. Yes. Let's go to April LaMonica up in Chopper 4 with some more information. April? April, can you hear us? Um, I guess we'll get to April yeah, lost in, in just a moment. I know that they've certainly made April and any of the other choppers who are in the area trying to cover this story back off because obviously what they want to mm -hmm. do is, is get yes. their work done in terms of rescue and and um, getting people out of there. Now, um, as you just mentioned, all three airports are closed. And I would imagine after, especially after seeing that second airplane crash into the second tower, I would imagine that the, uh, the military right now is uh, up in the skies and I'm sure that they are uh, certainly scanning the area for any more aircraft that could possibly be trying to come into the area. You will remember that the uh, World Trade Towers were the subject of an attack. Mm -hmm. How many years ago was it now? Uh, 10, 11? I, I, I can't even remember for sure. Um, but um, again, um, there has been a lot of security there. There has been a, uh, obviously they've been uh, very consistent in keeping those buildings um, rather secure. Um, so once, once again, we- Well, have, always secure at the bottom. That's right. You know, you, you can't get it from ground level, but uh, obviously very vulnerable up in the sky. Exactly. So let us, um, again, reiterate what we know because, and what we think we know because this is something that happened about 25 minutes ago. Yes. There were two explosions. The first one happened, maybe it was a half an hour ago, and um, there were eyewitnesses that told us on the first of the towers, the one that is closest to me, uh, or to closest to your screen, I should say. Uh, we, eyewitnesses told us they witnessed an airplane um, that apparently was making a beeline for that building. And there was an explosion, and you can see the damage. Then... Just a couple of minutes ago, we saw a second explosion. When we went back and looked at the videotape, it was very clear that a plane was coming. It was very clear that a plane was coming from the right over the, over the Hudson River and went between the two buildings and then slammed into the second building. That was the second explosion. First time we saw it, we didn't really catch the plane, but after a call from Janice Huff, she pointed it out to us, and sure enough, a second aircraft looked like it made a deliberate beeline for the second tower, and we saw that explosion just a little bit lower than the, the original explosion in the first tower. Obviously, this is already having quite an effect on the city of New York. Here, here yeah, we take a look at in. this video. Let's just look at this one more time. There you see the plane. Between the two buildings. And then you see the explosion. Right there. Unbelievable. Um, let us tell you that all of the airports in, New York, in the New York City metropolitan area are closed down right now. Subway lines 1, 2, 3, and 9 have all been, um, the service has been, um, it's, it's been cut off for the moment. And uh, we will continue to, to bring you up to date on what is going on. And we actually, uh, you know, are hoping we'll be able to, to talk to somebody from the mayor's office in just a few minutes to see what they might do. Okay, know. right now, let's, uh, as you can see, the chopper force had to back off. Let's go back to April LaMonica up top. April? Okay, what we can tell you right now from up here in Chopper 4, we cannot get any closer than about five miles to the scene because we need to keep this far back. But you can see the black smoke as far as we are away. We can zoom in here for you. First, you saw the smoke from the one tower. Then we witnessed an explosion on the other tower. Now we think that there was a plane that actually headed into that second tower at some point and that's what caused that second explosion. We are unable to get close enough to actually show you or tell you what's going on at the ground, but an unbelievable sight here from above the Hudson River at this vantage point. Back to you. 
just looking at the wire service at this point, and it tells us that the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking before the World Trade Center crashes. Now, that's all they're telling us. We know nothing more than that. Um, but uh, again, what's been happening here this morning, we have no absolute confirmation of anything other than what we can see with our own eyes. And now the FBI is telling us that there has been some sort of, um, of a plane hijacking that they're investigating. Yeah, we have another this. witness on the uh, telephone right now who actually saw the second explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, Elena? Cretella. Elena, can you hear us? Yes, I hear you clearly. Where are you? Tell us what you saw. Well, actually, I was uh, washing my dishes at my window and I heard a very low plane, which usually does happen, but when I looked up, it was like I was actually gliding with it, and I saw it, it actually went straight into one of the Twin Towers. It was like it was, it, it sunk right into the floor. It just it, it disintegrated instantly. Can you tell us what kind of an airplane it was? It looked like a huge 747. It was a big airline. It wasn't a small jet. It was a big carrier. Um, and did you, could you, you, you couldn't see anybody? Could you see a pilot or any such no, thing? No, I actually was, it was like side by side. It was like I was right behind it. It was huge. I couldn't believe how low it was. I was telling my roommate, this plane is very low. And I actually saw it go straight into the Twin Towers. Like, why is he going into the building? It was like it was almost deliberately glided into the building. Elena, where, where exactly do you live? Where did you see this from, Battery Park City? No, I'm in the East Village on 13th Street. And you then saw the plane go into the building, and I assume you saw the resulting... You better believe it. I saw an explosion like I have never seen. And all I can say is those people, I don't know, but they're all definitely disintegrated. It was the most awful thing I've ever seen. It was so sad. I was like a nervous wreck. Well, I, and I, I don't blame you. I, I appreciate you. It really you. was awful. And all I can say is we should pray for those people because it looked to me that it was deliberate. Unless the pilot had a heart attack... It was like this big 747 just went right into the floor of the Twin Towers. Well, Elena, yes. we thank you very much for um, yes. for calling us and, and, and giving us this information. Absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, obviously stick with us because we are going to find out what happened. We just simply do not know for sure yet other than the fact that airplanes ran into both of the Twin Towers um, about... Well, now about half an hour ago, uh, 18 minutes apart was, was one attack from the other. I shouldn't call it attack. One, one ramming into the uh, tower to the other. So. But you say we are getting reports that the FBI, FBI is investigating possibly these two planes have been hijacked. And I would have to think if she's correct, and it was a commercial airliner that went into the second building, then I, I think we've uh, definitely got a, a very serious situation. Well, obviously we have a serious situation anyway, but uh, I mean this, I mean, without... Going too much into speculation, I think we are definitely well, must be looking at a terrorist attack here. What, what we do not know, the FBI has not said where they are investigating the reports of the planes being hijacked from. Right. Obviously, it had to be a fairly recent um, hijacking, if that's indeed what happened, because there were no, no previous reports that would have led to any kind of speculation about what was going to happen next. Um, if we might, could we take a look at that video one more time that shows the second explosion? The first explosion happened at about 10 minutes to 9 this morning. The second one was about 18 minutes later. And here we were on the air, and this is what we saw. Look over to, uh, you're going to look over to the right of the screen, and in just a couple of minutes, as we widen out here, you will see what it appears to be a, a relatively small aircraft moving into the shot. Do you see it in the upper, upper right, right coming corner. in? And there you see it. Absolutely incredible. <sighs> Again, we have no knowledge of who was in that airplane, who was piloting it. We don't, if it was hijacked, we don't know if it was full of passengers or not. We do not know. We simply know at this point that we have the tops of two towers that are clearly in flames. We are going to continue to seek out the information for you. Let's reiterate what our eyewitnesses have told us. Well, we had the first plane um, crashing into the, uh, the tower, which, uh, if you're looking at your TV screen, would be on your right. We had a few phone calls. People said it looked like the plane deliberately went into the building. Some mm -hmm. people were not too sure. And about 18 minutes later, right here on live television, the second plane came into the picture and crashed into the second tower, a little farther down, and the witnesses we just talked to on the telephone just a few minutes ago, she said that she saw it fly 
by the window of her apartment building. She lives on the Lower East Side, and she said that it looked uh, like a commercial airliner to her. Yes, she said, she said it looked like a re relatively huge airplane. Yes. And again, the FBI is investigating reports um, of at least one plane hijacking and possibly two. Let's go to the telephone once again. We have Kay Cummings on the phone. Kay, what can you tell us? Um, I was watching the um, Channel 4 and the World Trade Center, which I can see really clearly from my window, and uh, there was a big plane that was heading right straight for the second tower. Uh, it looked like a commercial plane, not a small plane. And I kept thinking, this is too low, it's too low, it's too low. And then it went right in. And you could see it was headed right for it. Now, was this the first plane or the second? Second plane. The second plane. I didn't see the first one. And where, where exactly are you? I'm on 12th Street in Hudson, and I have an unobstructed view of the World Trade Center from my bedroom. Okay, and that airplane appeared to you to be a pretty good size as well, is that correct? Yeah, it looked like a commercial airplane. It came from the, from Jer from the Jersey side, uh, south, uh, southwest side, uh, coming toward the World Trade Center, very low. We have now reports on the wires that the FBI is investigating this as foul play, a crime here, obviously. Mm -hmm. This is, it looks like this is definitely deliberate. Uh, Kay, what can, what can you tell us about what you can see from the neighborhood right now? Do you see, I mean, can you, do you, can you see the street at all? Can you see no, anything? No, I'm, I'm much, much, much I'm, too I'm high? in the village. Okay. Um, all I can tell you is that there are loads of fire engines and police cars and sirens he all heading down. And uh, as we are looking at live pictures, our Skycam view, I assume you're seeing somewhat the same view from your windows. Yes. You can see it's, it still appears to be burning pretty much out of control. You can see the fire, and I can see the fire in the second building and the first. Mm -hmm. And you've seen debris falling off? Yes. Um, that's yeah. a helicopter. That's, that's fine. Yeah. And obviously this is a situation because of the height of the buildings. It's going to be very hard for the fire department oh, to absolutely. get up there and put these fires out. Absolutely. Um, Kay, we, we thank you very much. I assume that, that uh, you were pretty shocked when you saw w w what happened before your very eyes. It was horrible. Uh, it was just one of those things you see and you can't stop. Uh, it was just, um, I don't know. I've never seen anything like that. It was horrible. Okay, we of course have seen something similar to this back in February of 93. That of course was when the, uh, the, the terrorist bombing of the, of the World Trade Center and that was uh, of course a major disaster and uh, a lot of fatalities there and uh, this is obviously very frightening to have this happen eight years later like this. Well, it is and again they put huge security measures um, in play for getting mm -hmm. into those structures but as you pointed out earlier, um, they're vulnerable from the they're sky. They're vulnerable apparently from the sky. Yeah. Let's just tell you that we have no word at this point about injuries, fatalities, or anything like that, and we certainly would not want to speculate at this point. Emergency crews are on the scene. We will bring you what information we can get from them as soon as we get it. Now, as we said in Washington, the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking before these crashes. Um, there are two planes that apparently have been involved. We have physically witnessed one of them on our live camera. Uh, we do not know exactly what planes they were, what size they were, but our eyewitnesses have told us they appeared to be pretty good size airplanes. Well, maybe there's a little discrepancy on the first plane. Some people are saying it was a smaller craft. Some people are saying it was a larger craft, but definitely the witnesses we've talked to as far as the second explosion said that it definitely was a commercial airliner that, uh, that crashed into the second tower. Again, the FBI is investigating this as foul play, which I think is pretty obvious at this point. And, uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see what, what happens here, but uh, this is... Oh. Okay, we've told you that the airports in the New York City metropolitan yes. area are closed down. We have told you that the 1, 2, 3, and 9 subway lines are shut down for the moment. Let us go to Katie McGee over at Shadow Traffic because there has to be other huge traffic impacts at this moment, Katie. Jane, this is enormous. Right now, all your Hudson River crossings closed. No one moving in or out of town at the Lincoln, the Holland, or the GW Bridge. I'm looking at the inbound Lincoln live from my vantage point right now. They're starting to turn buses around. I've not seen anything like this before. All bridges and tunnels you're going to find closures. No one allowed in or out of the city right now from what we're hearing. You did mention the subways. One, two, three, nine, and are suspended. Newark, Kennedy, LaGuardia airports closed to all air traffic at this point. 
Katie, and uh, any of the sky, other sky cams that we have, do you see mass traffic confusion? What do you see on some of those bridges and tunnels at this moment? What I can tell you right now, I'm looking live at the inbound side of the GW bridge, and what we can see are the tolls. Everyone completely stopped. There is some traffic coming outbound over the span. I can also see people <coughs> from the Cross Bronx heading into there. But right now, no one allowed into town at all. At the Lincoln Tunnel, it is at an absolute Stand still. I can see one bus on the outbound side trying to turn around and look like he's heading back into New Jersey from what it looks like. Okay. Thank you very much, Katie. We stay in place, please, because we will be back to you shortly. Okay, Jane, I just, uh, something just crossed the wires. This is a senior government official speaking on the condition of anonymity said the agency is pursuing reports that one or both of the planes were hijacked and that the crashes may have been the result of a suicide mission. The source stressed that the reports are preliminary and officials do not know the cause of the crashes. But this is a quote, it certainly doesn't look like an accident. Um, well, again, can we reiterate what we do know? Because as you can imagine, um, this is pretty shocking to people in the metropolitan area to just even look at these pictures. Uh, what we have been told by eyewitnesses is that they saw fairly, apparently fairly large size aircraft going into the first of the World Trade Center towers, the one on your right as you're looking at the screen. That was at about 10 minutes to 9. Then, um, about 18 minutes later, there was an, apparently an airplane, because we could see that from our own sky cams and our Chopper 4 video that uh, went into the second tower, and there was a resulting explosion there. Hey, Jane, we have another witness on the telephone. Todd Hollerman, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Uh, where are you, and what did you see, Todd? Um, I'm on 330 West 42nd Street. I, uh, I saw a huge plane come in from the water and crash into the side of the building. Which water? Are you talking crossing the Hudson? Right. Now, this would be the second explosion? Right. And uh, from your vantage point, uh, could you tell what kind of an airplane it is? There seems to be uh, a lot of confusion about that. It, it, looked, it looked huge. I, I couldn't tell exactly what kind it was. It was just tremendous. I was just saying to my coworkers, you know, look at the size of this thing. It looks like you know, some kind of stealth fighter or something. And what you saw was it deliberately aiming for the building. It didn't appear to be a plane that was in any kind of trouble, anything like that. Right. I mean, I, I thought I was watching like a movie scene. It was, it was moving in quickly. It was moving in close. And then it was just, you know, boom. Did you see any insignia on that airplane? No, I didn't. And you then saw it hit the tower. Right. Um, and I'm just, I'm just curious, did you at that point see any other, you know, reaction? Did you hear anything? Did you see anything when you saw that initial explosion? No, I'm, I'm not close enough to really hear anything, I don't think, but, um, I'm just looking out my window right now in, in shock, watching this thing burn. Yeah, I, as, as we all are, as we all are. Um, Todd, thank you very much. We appreciate it, and, um, we, we appreciate your information. Sure. Jay, we just learned that uh, President Bush was in a classroom in Sarasota, Florida, reading to some uh, students. Uh, his chief of staff, Andrew Card, said, uh, whispered in the ears and told him what was going on, and the, the president will uh, be coming up in just a couple of minutes, and uh, he will give us his reaction on what is going on. And um, again, we have not heard from emergency workers on the scene to know the extent of um, the damage or the injuries at this point. One would have to assume on a day like today, a normal work day in New York City, 9 o'clock in the morning, most of those offices were probably open. Yes. And uh, there were certainly a lot of people in those two buildings. Um, they, to our knowledge, uh, people on the lower levels have been evacuated. Um, but at this point, we simply cannot bring you any information about um, what is going on. There's now, one of those... Uh Hudson River crossings that yeah. Katie McGee was talking about. You see the George Washington Bridge, traffic has absolutely stopped. Traffic going into the city, you can see on the bridge, there's absolutely no cars whatsoever. Let us just tell you that you really cannot get in or out of this city at this moment Actually, in time. you can get on the outbound, they were letting cars come out over to New Jersey. Right, but you cannot get into the city. Absolutely, can't get into the city. Um, all the airports are shut down. The subway lines, one, two, three, and nine, are shut down at the moment. Um, we do not know when anything will get back to normal. Um, and again, to reiterate the point about the FBI said to be investigating whether or not um, there was some hijacking of a couple of airplanes involved in all of this. Also, an anonymous government official said that uh, it would appear that this was not one but two suicide bombings, that the, the pilots deliberately turned the planes right into each of the uh, 
towers at the World Trade Center, and, uh, and obviously you can see the disastrous result right here on our screen. Let us go to Richard Thompson on the telephone. He is a licensed pilot, and he witnessed this. Sir, from taking a look at what you saw, what can you tell us as a pilot about those airplanes? Well, I was sitting in my office on the eighth floor uh, at 632 Broadway at, at uh, approximately uh, 947, and at 947, give or take a minute. You mean 847, don't you, sir? 847 this morning. Uh, the plane went by probably 50 to 100 feet above the building, streaking directly towards the World Trade Center, and uh, it was a small business jet of some type. I, I, it was going so fast, and my window view is so short but I could hear it screaming by at basically full power, uh, no engine problems, going straight for the building. And by the time that I could get out of my chair, open the window to see what the hell was going on, it had hit the building, and that was probably a total of five to seven, eight seconds. So that would have been the first yes, of that was the, first. the explosions. Exactly, and it was directly, everyone was flying the plane was directly. Richard, stay tuned. We've got the president. We're gonna to go to him next, but we wanna come back to you. Okay. Going back to Washington after my remarks, Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President to the governor of New York, to the director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence, May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. You, you have just heard President Bush acknowledging that this was an apparent terrorist attack today on the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan. He has ordered a full-scale investigation and um, offered, of course, his prayers for whatever victims there might have been of this tragedy. And again, we have no information about who has been hurt, who was killed, if anyone. Um, we know nothing other than the fact that there has been this apparent attack involving two aircraft. Um, let us, can we go back to the telephone and Richard Thompson now? Are you still there, sir? Yes. Um, again, you are a licensed pilot. You were describing to us that you saw what appeared to be a small business jet that was flying, uh, that came screaming by your office window and went right into the tower. Exactly. Is that being a pilot is the first thing I recognized that there was no way that a business jet could be um, flying at that level at this time of day over the city without special permission. So that um, I tried to crane my head out the window, but within five seconds before I could open my window and look out, it already had flown directly into the building. And being a pilot, I know that you could have avoided that. Um, at at 99 percent, if you were in trouble flying that plane, you could have avoided that building. And so whomever was at the controls directly flew that thing right into the side of that building. Could you, again, did you see the second aircraft? Apparently it might have come in from the other direction. No, I couldn't see it. I was looking at the building when it hit, and I saw uh, my colleague um, Tim Lufkin and I saw it hit the building, but we did not see it fly into the building. We saw the explosion from it. And again, I guess we're still trying to figure out, ex there are some reports that these planes were hijacked. The FBI is said to be investigating that. Um, but it, the one that you saw appeared to be a small business jet. Yes. And the second plane was obviously a larger plane because the explosion from the second plane was tenfold larger than the first plane. Okay. Mr. Thompson, we appreciate very much the information you've given us uh, this morning. And may God be with all those people because yeah, this is absolutely. going to be a tough day for all of New York. Yes, uh, it is, and, and we thank you. We now that. have reports that the New York Stock Exchange is being evacuated in the wake of the disaster at the World Trade Center. Uh, they had planned to open as normal, so uh, 
right now everything at the stock exchange is on hold and right now uh, let's go down to Joe Avalar who's on the street downtown Joe all right, we're down here in Soho, as a matter of fact. You're looking at our picture from Prince and Worcester Street, and on the ground you can see what has happened all over Manhattan. People are stopped and they're staring. They're looking up and they're trying to figure out all of what's happening. In talking to some of these people, I met someone, Philip Russo, who actually witnessed the whole thing. You were driving east on Bleecker Street, that's correct? That's correct. I was driving east on Bleecker Street. Have you step around this way? Put sure. It in the background. Um, I heard uh, what sounded like a jet flying very low. I looked up, I saw a blue and white jet, two engines, going obviously in the wrong direction. You were thinking jet, you were thinking 737, something like something that, a like large that, jet. A large jet, a large commercial jet, but with no markings that I could identify other than blue stripes on a white plane. Uh, it sounded too low, I looked up, it looked too low, going in the wrong direction, and I followed it into the building. Flew straight into the Flew building? straight into the building, dead on, disgusting sight. Then you continued to look up at the building and you saw the second jet. Well, then we were looking for about five minutes just in horror at what happened. Saw a second jet coming from the west that looked identical, uh, both in color and in form. And it smashed right into the second building. Huge explosion on this side facing us. Now we're all standing out. We're staring at the building, all of us, uh, in horror. Yeah. It's the only way to describe it. Horror, sadness, and disgust. You talked about fear and being scared. And what next? And feelings two, of vulnerability. Two huge planes crash into, you know, the World Trade Center. What's going to happen next? Mr. Russo, thank you very much for talking with us. As we look back up at the World Trade Center, and I know you can see it better with helicopters, but you can see it from the ground here as well. The picture that we are looking at, that most of Lower Manhattan is looking at, flames inside the World Trade Center in the huge hole, and we can all see how the flames have spread to upper parts of the building, how it's billowing out of the building, and how the other building is occluded. And everybody from this vantage point is, as Mr. Russo was saying, looking at it in horror, looking at it in fear, worried about yourself, I imagine. Where were you, sir? Right underneath it, right underneath the Trade Center when it hit. Second one, both of them hit. We yeah. ran like hell all the way up here. Did you happen to look up? Yeah, we seen the second one run right into where I'm loading the truck. We got right out of there. Scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. The planes never veered, did they? The jets just went right into it. The second one, we heard the first one, seen everything flying out of the building. And the second one, we've actually seen run right into the building. It came right from behind the building, ran right into the other side of the first tower, the further one down. It's a terrible question, but what, what, what are you thinking about when you're know. looking at something like we, that? I'm telling you, we ran because stuff was flying everywhere. It's the scariest thing in my life. And that's never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it, man. And your name, sir? Sean O'Neill. Still tell my wife I'm all right. <laughs> As it is a way to, for people to let them know everybody's okay as they stand and watch this in horror. You're just walking through the area, sir? No, I was with him. You and, were with him? Uh, and we heard the explosion. And I'll never forget that explosion, I'll tell you that. We were just under some scaffolding and debris started falling all over the place. Now, people here talked about the second explosion and didn't think it was that loud, didn't feel that it was... It was we were there. It was loud. I'm going to tell you that. We were right there for both of them and it was loud. Windows coming down off the building. We just had like rocks and... Stuff, just all, every type of debris Wire. you can think of just falling all over the place. Now you were there when this happened. Yes, we were right Why there. did you stop up here in Soho and then turn around and look at it? You just have to, have have to, to see what happens. Time we turn around and look. You really, you know, we're just running from there. I mean, we're just running for safety, basically. Yeah. Yep. yeah. To get out of there. And uh, I don't know why. There's a whole bunch of people driving down from someone you know, down there, just causing, blocking the fire trucks and everything. We were trying to clear the streets and let fire trucks go through. And it's a madhouse now. It's just madhouse. madhouse. That, that's, that's, really a, that's really a good point to New Yorkers who may be watching us, yeah. however they're watching get or listening to us right now, is to try to get out of that area to let the emergency yeah, crews do what they need there. to do. Yeah. Because there are clearly people still trapped up there and firefighters and emergency crews still need to do a lot of work. And you can see as we're standing here that fire is spreading to different parts of the building, different floors, as it continues to engulf the building. A, just a horrible, horrible sight. It from is. here in, in Soho. It is sad. Saddest thing I've ever seen, man. Shoo. It's sad. It's nothing like I've ever I've ever seen. Nothing like anybody here in New York has ever seen either. That's the scene here from Prince and Worcester Street, and we'll talk to some other people as time goes on. Joe, to you. Joe, uh, you are not close enough to... Okay, apparently Joe cannot hear us, so thank you, Joe. We appreciate that. Um, obviously, we are, again, trying to ferret out all the information we can about what, exactly what happened in Lower Manhattan this morning. It, uh, 
the, the president has said it was a terrorist attack. There were two airplanes involved. Dozens of eyewitnesses have told us that. One of them appeared to be bigger than the other. The second bigger than the other. And we all witnessed it right here on live television. Caught us all completely off guard. And, and it, the, a normal work day here in Manhattan has come to a standstill. We've been told that the, the subway lines 1, 2, 3, and 9 have been shut down. All the Hudson River crossings have been shut down. The New York Stock Exchange has closed down for the day. And uh, right now, a lot of people are just stunned in shock. Again, two airplanes, two separate incidents, minutes apart, crashing into both towers of the World Trade Center. And you certainly see the result as far as the structural damage. I mean, it is major. And uh, as you said, President Bush said that uh, this is an apparent terrorist attack. We expect to hear from uh, Mayor Giuliani in just a couple of minutes. Governor Pataki is in town. As a matter of fact, he does have an office in the World Trade Center, but President Bush says that he has talked to the governor. Right. So as far as we know, the governor is okay. And like I said, we should hear from Mayor Giuliani in the next couple of minutes. But again, to reiterate, we know nothing about what happened to the people who work on those in those floors, in those buildings. So we are simply waiting to find out about injuries and casualties, if indeed that's what happened. Um, so you were looking at a scene that one would wish you could never witness in a city like this. And of course, this is the second major attack on the World Trade Center. There was the bombing back in 1993. And of course, that was at the bottom. And the, the top of the building, obviously very vulnerable. And uh, we with, certainly saw with, witness that today. Right, with all the security changes that they've yes. made on the bottom. So nobody can get up there without the right kind of clearance. But uh, it's vulnerable to attack by air. Absolutely, you can't stop it up there. We are going to uh, once again go to Katie McGee because as we've been telling you, the city is literally at a standstill. Um, no one's being allowed in from any of the river crossings. And uh, the subway lines have been shut down in that area and the airports are all closed. Katie, what more can you tell us? Jane, this is the latest. This, the city at this point is at a standstill. All three major area airports, LaGuardia, Kennedy and Newark, are closed at this point to all incoming and outgoing traffic, all bridges and tunnels. No one is letting any traffic head into town. At this point, outbound, you are going to find some people. We just saw some folks that had been sitting in one of the tubes coming out of the Lincoln Tunnel. They were allowed out, but now everybody being turned away. We also saw a backup down near Canal Street waiting to get into the outbound Holland. Those people also being turned away. At this point, again, no one being allowed to head into the city. For all intents and purpose, all train service suspended is what we're hearing at this point. Police are saying, please leave the city if you can. Of course, this is rough because of the way traffic is right now. You really, really want to steer clear of anywhere south of Midtown. And again, everyone right now being turned away. We saw traffic trying to get into the Lincoln Tunnel, actually turning around and backing up buses, New Jersey transit buses, bringing people back into New Jersey, never even making it close to the entrance to the Lincoln Tunnel. Katie, what do you think right now would probably be the best way to get out of Manhattan, probably head up the FDR and the West Side Highway? At this point, you're, exactly, you're going to want to try and get as north as possible. I can see from one of my cameras live right now the westbound cross Bronx heading in towards the outbound George Washington Bridge. Traffic it is, an, is in an absolute crawl right now, but they are letting you get onto the bridge and from what it looks like, come in over it and back into New Jersey. I do see traffic coming outbound George Washington Bridge, inbound again, completely Stopped. If you were planning on heading into the city, even if you think you may still have a meeting at this point, again, you're being advised to please stay where you are. For example, if you lived in New Jersey, your best bet probably would be go through Westchester County, cross the Tappan Zee Bridge, and come back down. You may want to try that out. Let me take a look right now and see how my Tappan Zee Bridge camera looks. Just bear with me for one second, and I'll tell you. Actually, it looks like... Right now, traffic heading into Westchester is moving, but it's at a crawl. Again, at this point, you know, things are happening so rapidly. If you were to leave home in Westchester right now, I can't tell you you'd definitely be able to get into town in another half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Uh, well, it, it sounds to me like we... Jane, we're just getting a report that there's been an attack on the Pentagon. This is the Pentagon. This is, this is from the network. This is the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. This, these are pictures that have just come in to us here at News Channel 4. You are looking at live pictures of what appears to be an attack on the Pentagon. Um, we can tell you nothing more than what you were looking at. Um, this is approximately an hour ago that we had one airplane crash into the northern of the World Trade Center towers, and um, about 18 minutes later, another airplane crashed into the southern of the towers and now we have this.
We also hear that the, uh, the first plane that hit the World Trade Center was apparently hijacked after takeoff from Boston. That it means there's a very good possibility that that plane did have some passengers on board. Um, do we know what kind of an airplane is it? What does it say? Uh, it doesn't at, say? at this time, it does not say. It just says the first plane that hit the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. That now, according to a U.S. official. Now, according to the pilot that we had on a few minutes ago, he said that appeared to be a smaller jet, business type of jet. Yes. Um, so perhaps it was some sort of a commuting airline or something like that. Um, let us go back and listen to what President Bush had to say a few moments ago. This was before this latest explosion at the Pentagon. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you. This was President Bush about 20 minutes ago. Um, but now let us tell you that since that statement, there has been an explosion at the Pentagon. And we have on the wire now a story that says um, an Associated Press reporter saw the tail end of a large airliner plunge into the building. And, uh, this is a live picture of the White House. We understand the West Wing has been evacuated. Again, the president is not at the White House in D.C. He is down in Sarasota. He was reading to a class of children at a school when he was uh, told what happened, and that's where he held his press conference. But again, we two planes have hit the World Trade Center, and now witnesses say just a few moments ago in Arlington, Virginia, another plane has plunged into the Pentagon. And again, we have no information about exactly what happened down there um, other than the fact that some sort of an aircraft um, the, has crashed near or into the Pentagon. So uh, obviously, it is um, a day that we are witnessing something we have never seen before, and uh, we don't know um, we don't know anything more about who's responsible for it than we have since the very beginning, which was about an hour ago, which was when the first aircraft. As the president said, apparently a terrorist attack. Exactly. And he has ordered full-scale investigations and um, has, has vowed to use every effort he can and that this country can to find out who is responsible and to bring them to justice. Um, we have had numerous eyewitnesses who have talked about the airplanes that they saw literally smash into those two buildings about 18 minutes apart within the hour. And uh, obviously it was something that they witnessed with shock and with horror. And we have nothing to tell you at this point about the number of injuries or the fatalities. We understand Mayor Giuliani is about to hold a press conference yes. and perhaps he will be able to give us some more information about all of that. This just crossed about the Pentagon. An Associated Press reporter said he saw the tail end of a large airliner plunge into the building. He says smoke is billowing out of the Pentagon. So obviously now <clears throat> we're looking at the hijacking probably of three commercial airliners here in the United States. We know the first one came from that Boston. plunged into the World Trade Center came from uh, the airport in Boston. And through a transmission, they learned that that plane was hijacked. We should also warn those of you who are watching us that if you have plans to come into New York City today, you must cancel them. Um, the city is literally shut down. The stock exchange has been closed. The airports are closed. The bridges, the tunnels, closed inbound and pretty much outbound at this point. The subways, all train service has been stopped. Um, so we, of course, recommend that you stay put wherever you are and uh, stay tuned to find out exactly what is happening. And we've just learned that uh, after what has happened at the Pentagon that uh, the West Wing of the White House has been evacuated as well as the U.S. Capitol now. So I'm sure all government buildings uh, are being shut down in, uh, in the nation's capital and pretty much around the country. And I'm sure that uh, we are now on, uh, we're on terrorist alert, probably nationwide, I would think. Um, and there's another report that's just come over that says the White House was threatened with a terrorist attack, a source says. Um, 
we have another report from an eyewitness at the Pentagon. Uh, it says it was a huge fireball, a huge orange fireball. And um, another witness said that it might have been a helicopter that exploded. We've had a, a, an AP reporter who says it appears to him to have been a large airliner of some sort. And we do have reports that, of course, the uh, FBI is investigating um, reports that it could have been hijacked aircraft that well, crashed. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the FAA has just now halted all air traffic throughout the United States. Um, so as of right now, there, there are no commercial airliners in the air. Uh, I doubt that that has ever happened before in this country. I don't think so. Um, so again, uh, we do have a, a bulletin that I see here that says a Palestin Palestinian DFLP official denies any kind of responsibility for the World Trade Center crash. Um, and, you know, again, everybody is trying to find out exactly what it is that uh, has happened here. We, we simply do not know who is responsible. Um, if we might, could we see the video again that showed us the second airliner crashing into the southern of the buildings? Now, as you see, you will see in a couple of moments here, a plane will come into the picture from the upper right-hand corner of your screen, if you're watching at home. Coming down here in just a few seconds as our camera backs up from Chopper 4. There you see the plane coming into the picture. It will dip down below the first building. We don't see it for a couple of seconds. And then it comes back out and slams into the other tower at the World Trade Center. Again, this has all happened within the past hour and five minutes or so. Um, we are witnessing things that we've never seen anything like it before. The, obviously, there was a terrorist attack uh, back in 1993, about eight years ago, on the Twin Towers. At that point, six people were killed, a thousand people were injured. Major security measures were put into effect after that, m making sure that people did not get into that building unless they had the proper clearance. Um, but obviously, the buildings today were vulnerable to air. We do not know anything about the people who were working inside those buildings. Um, obviously, it's a full work day in New York City, but, uh, a Tuesday in September. And it's also primary day, mm -hmm. um, so people were going to work as usual. Now, it happened a few minutes before 9 in one of the buildings. Yes. Well, one would assume that maybe some of those offices weren't quite open yet. I, I would think so. A lot of people had not arrived to work. We certainly hope that is the case. Um, as you said, the first, uh, the first explosion, the first plane slamming into the, uh, the first building, a plane that was hijacked from Boston, happened about... It was about 8.50, somewhere between 8.50 and 9 o'clock this mm -hmm, morning. Mm -hmm. And it was 18 minutes later, we saw right here on our live picture from Chopper 4, the second plane, which uh, witnesses have described as a full commercial airliner, slamming into the second tower. And you saw the dramatic explosion. And then, of course, just a couple of minutes ago, uh, witnesses say that another commercial airliner has slammed into the Pentagon down in Arlington, Virginia, the U.S. Capitol, and the White House have both been evacuated, and we understand that the White House had received a threat of a terrorist attack. Now we're looking back at the Pentagon. Again, you can see the smoke billowing from there. We have uh, uh, no other information at this point about casualties or injuries or exactly what it was that uh, smashed into the Pentagon earlier today. Um, that happened, what? 25 minutes ago, 20 minutes yes. ago, something of that sort. Um, you know, one of the other pictures, we, saw, we actually saw a, um, um, a member of the military in full fatigue. Outside the White House. Outside the White House, uh, you know, fully loaded and ready to go for anything. We expect that Mayor Giuliani is going to be speaking shortly. As you can imagine, I'm sure there is a scene of much confusion now at... Uh, downtown in lower manhattan outside the world trade center towers um, we have just been told that the pentagon is being evacuated um, at this point um, and we're looking back at the world trade center towers here the smoke continues to billow but the fire is clearly not under control yet jane we have another witness on the telephone of the uh the second plane slamming into yes. the second tower his name is robert thomas from brooklyn heights can you hear me robert yes i can can you tell us exactly what you saw i was on the roof deck of my building watching the fire from the first explosion and i was on the phone with my parents in florida and i watched the second plane coming in from staten islandish area 
Um, and I was thinking, I was telling my mom on the phone, that plane is too low. I can't believe it's that close to the building after the first one hit. And it was gray on the top plane. It was about the size of one of the shuttles, maybe coming from D.C. area. Um, it was not a small plane. It was like a 737 or something. Um, uh, and whatever air airline is gray on the top. And I saw it hit the building. I have a very good friend who works at Windows in the World, the pastry chef, Heather Ho, and I hope to God she's okay today. Have you, have you attempted to reach her? I tried to call her at home. The work number is busy, of course. And I tried to call her at home and got her message. Okay. Um, again, we've been talking about how the FBI is reporting, or is investigating reports that uh, at least one aircraft, if not two, were hijacked earlier today. Um, so from your vantage point, what you could see appeared to be the size of perhaps a shuttle aircraft. Right. It was not a small plane. It was a big plane. Okay. I know people have been saying a small commuter, but it wasn't small. It was definitely a... You know, it definitely held a, a good group of people. Mm -hmm. um, could you see? Could you see anybody through the windows or the cockpit of that aircraft? No, you too far it, away. It wasn't that close, but I could clearly see the plane coming in. I could clearly see it aiming straight for the building. It was in a long, swooping motion. It wasn't a jerky flight. It went straight into it. Oh my! And it was way. I mean, it was so low. It was unbelievable to watch. I well, tell you what, I'm scared right now. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. We, we appreciate your comments, and we thank you very much for, for giving us this information because, thank of you. course, we are, we are trying to find out exactly what happened on this Tuesday morning. Jane, we're learning the State Department has also been evacuated. The Associated Press has learned that the White House was evacuated after the Secret Service did receive a credible threat of a terrorist act against the White House. Does it say what time that, att that, that threat came in? No, it does not. So we don't know if it we was before it was the before. planes crashed into the World Trade Center or after. Um, what we're seeing now is that is there's information that the aircraft at the Pentagon crashed in a helicopter landing pad near the Pentagon. Um, again, the West Wing of the White House evacuated amid threats of terrorism. As well as the U.S. Capitol and the State Department now. Exactly. Um, one of the planes, we're also being told that one of the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center had been hijacked after takeoff from Boston, as you've just said, um, citing a transmission from that airplane. Let's go and, and review for you exactly what has happened as a result of all of this. All airplane traffic across this across country, country yes. has been grounded. There are no airplanes leaving or land. Or I assume they can land. Those assuming, are up in yeah, the air. Right. But um, there are no aircraft that are going to be leaving uh, any of the airports around the country for at least the time being. We do not know how long. It is virtually impossible to get in up into this city right now. The bridges, the subways, the tunnels, everything is shut down. Um, there are major traffic jams from people who were trying to leave or trying to get in. Um, obviously, it is a good day to stay put wherever you are. Um, obviously, the airports here are all closed. Right. The stock exchange has been closed. Closed down. Uh, subways, the 1, 2, 3, and 9, all train service in and out of the city is now shut down. And, uh, you know, not to, at, in the big picture, this is really not that important at this moment, but uh, you have to wonder if maybe the, uh, the primary election will be uh, possibly be suspended because of this. Well, people can't go to their polling places. You're absolutely right. And, and, and uh, you know, and I'm sure that's something that they will sort out later. Absolutely. Because I'm sure not a single one of these candidates is worrying about that at this moment. No, no. Um, we heard the president call this a terrorist attack. That was before. Uh, the explosion at the Pentagon. So um, the president is uh, being fully briefed. He said he had talked to the governor. Now, the governor has an office in the World Trade Center. He was in Manhattan, um, but we do not know where he is. President Bush has said he has talked to the governor. So we assume that he is safe um, at this point. Uh, we are waiting for the mayor to give us some kind of information about casualties or injuries this morning. Okay, we have another reporter uh, out on the street, Walter Perez. Uh, can you hear us, Walter? Here we are about two blocks away from... Okay, two blocks away from where the whole thing happened, and this entire area has been cordoned off, and people that have been working in nearby buildings have been told to evacuate. That's what this mass exodus is to my left-hand side. To my right, we have two witnesses, and as we speak with you two, we're going to pan up and show a shot of what we see from this vantage point. First, Marna Ringle, and Marna, you work across the street. Tell me exactly what you saw on the street, and as you looked up, what you saw, because you said you saw the second one. Am I correct? No, I didn't see the second one. I actually was coming out of the building, and there was maybe about 30 or 40 people at the bottom of 
of One World Financial covered in blood. I did not expect that at all. And I work for Lehman in one right here. And a gentleman that I work with was on the telephone. He said, what was that? I said, I, you know, he thought it was thunder. I looked over, screamed, it's a bomb, because I saw a piece of the building flow down. And I think I scared my entire floor because I can scream pretty loud and it was pretty bad. Now you mentioned that you saw people on the road outside of the building. Explain that scene. I, I saw um, there's maybe about 30 or 40 people uh, covered with bandages and blood. It looks like a lot of them were either on the floor of one of the exchanges. There's actually, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God. We're not sure exactly what happened, but it was another explosion on the far side of one of the buildings from where we're standing. The, ver the, the reverberation and another explosion on the right-hand side. Another building has gone. Another building has gone up on the right-hand side of the road. People are now running down the street. We're not sure if that was another explosion or if that was advanced debris. Joining me also is Jim Plant. Jim, you're also a witness of what happened. Tell me exactly what you saw from your vantage point across the street. I was just across Liberty and, uh, and West here, and I saw the second plane hit the uh, uh, Tower 2. It looked like a 737. It uh, hit a glancing blow, it didn't hit it direct. I don't know where the rest of the plane went, uh, but it went in, fireball came out, and it hit lower than the first uh, plane, which hit uh, the upper floors. Jim, thank you very much. At this point, as you can tell, there's absolute pandemonium in this area because of what had just happened. Exactly what, I can't confirm, but on the far side of the building, there seemed to be another explosion. And also on the right-hand side, there was also another explosion. We're not sure if that was uh, extra reverberation from what happened at the World Trade Center or if that was an added explosion. At this point, there's a, a lot of smoke, massive plumes of smoke falling from the building across the street. People that were running down the street or walking are now running away. We don't have any information as far as what the most recent uh, reverberations were, but from two blocks away, you could feel what happened. We'll get more information and pass it along to you. All right, thank you very much, Walter. Again, uh, one or two more explosions again around the World Trade Center. We don't know if it was in the same building or adjacent buildings. Can we um, re-rack that video that we were looking at as Walter was interviewing those people? Because um, perhaps that will give us some indication of what this was. Uh, obviously, there are buildings nose to nose down there. Yes. Um, we have. Uh, no idea if this was a third explosion or if it might have been um, something from the debris raining down from one of the World Trade Center towers. It appears to be to the south of those buildings, but take a look at those pictures, and that is quite an incredible sight. Again, Over. this all started this morning at about, about 10 minutes to 9 o'clock. Uh, we understand that a commercial airliner, maybe a small commercial airliner, was apparently hijacked leaving the airport in Boston, Logan Airport in Boston, and uh, slammed into one of the towers. About 18 minutes later, a second commercial airliner, which witnesses tell us was much bigger, slammed into the second tower. Soon after that, we heard from President Bush that said this was an apparent terrorist attack. Not long after he talked, a plane crashed very close to the Pentagon. From what we understand, down in the nation's capital, the White House, the U.S. Capitol, and the State Department have all been evacuated and that the Secret Service did receive a very real threat that the White House would also suffer the same fate as the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, which has not happened yet, and we hope it doesn't. And, of course, all commercial traffic around the United States has been shut down. Air traffic. Yes. Commercial air traffic. All commercial air traffic. Uh, joining us now is Jim Rosenfield, who's been up on the newsroom. Do you have anything you can add to all of well, this? Well, just, you know, in, in getting here to Rockefeller Center this morning to share with you, because you've been here in the studio, just the scenes on the street, yeah. people on their cell phones trying to find out what's going on, people calling loved ones, trying to find out if they're okay. As you walk into this building, a lot of people out on the street not being permitted to go up and, and down through most of the elevators for security reasons obviously uh, as we think about the landmarks in Manhattan people are taking very serious security precautions just for that reason a lot of emotions I should share with you up in the newsroom too as we hear these just gut-wrenching eyewitness accounts of what these people must be going through uh, especially in the Twin Towers right now just amazing we we have just been told that this, what we thought was another explosion, was indeed, according to the Associated Press, another building that has either been attacked or exploded. Um, so it appears to be separate from the two that we have already um, witnessed this morning. And if you take a look at this scene right now, the smoke that is billowing over, over Lower Manhattan is uh, truly um, a frightening sight to see. Again, the, the, the part that I think concerns all of us is that we have no knowledge 
of what happened to the people who might have been inside any of those buildings. Uh, it's a normal work day, and um, although the first explosion came early, it might have meant some people weren't there yet, but I guarantee you that there are a lot of people who were already in those buildings. Sure, and in, in the Twin Trade Towers, a lot of state workers in those buildings who get there well before 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. As you come down some of the major arteries in Manhattan, you can just see this smoke from miles away. A very eerie sight uh, as, uh, as I was coming towards Midtown. You look up, and there's the smoke coming out of the world. How, how, did, you, how did you come to work today? I actually walked most of the way yeah. because traffic is, as you would imagine, a complete mess. Emergency vehicles trying to make their way all down to downtown to lower Manhattan. So it's difficult for anybody who's trying to get around. Bridges and tunnels, as you've been mentioning, are closed. So getting on and off the island isn't going to happen right now. Right. Okay, Jim, right now we have a, a terrorism expert on the telephone, Harvey Kushner. Harvey, can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Harvey, uh, this obviously has all the earmarks of terrorism. Yes, it, it, unfortunately it does. And, you know, I've been in this business almost uh, 40 years. And quite frankly, I couldn't have written a scenario like this. Uh, if I would have come forward with something uh, like possibility like this, uh, they would have laughed. I mean, th this has all of the worst case scenarios put together into one. Uh, this is monumental. Uh, this will be something that, you know, you know, you get Gary Condit in the news, you have OJ. This is something that we're going to be looking at for the next couple of years, unfortunately, and uh, not just from a media perspective, but from the people who witnessed this. I mean, when you think of the psychological trauma that this is going to cause to New Yorkers and to Americans, uh, it's monumental. It's off the map. As you see this, this, the, the scope of this and the methodical way in which it appears to have been planned and happened, and again, we don't know what truly occurred, but there's, no. there's, there's talk of a aircraft being hijacked, right. of second explosions, of et cetera, et cetera. What, if, if there are signals you can read in that as an expert on all of this, what, what, what can you tell us about that? Well, it, it shows that, you know, in the last couple of years, and I just got off of the embassy bombing trial, I was involved in that, and I, I've seen a picture painted of Osama bin Laden, not to say that he's involved in this necessarily, but of his network and his ability to try to do damage to the United States. And over the last couple of years, a lot of terrorism experts worldwide have been talking about the day of the freelancer, for those not familiar with the term, individuals who do things by themselves. Obviously, this type of event which occurred today is something that costs a lot of money, a lot of planning, such as what happened in the embassy bombing trial had to blow up two embassies. And obviously, they had the will and the desire, many people, to be able to pull something like this off. I mean, think about hijacking a plane, the difficulties involved in that, but yet to have it flown into a building is just monumental in terms of timing, in terms of the ability of the number of people on that plane. I mean, if I had to surmise, I would think it wasn't just one individual. It had to be groups of individuals to be able to control something like that, to pull something like this off. And if the reports are true that uh, we're having a coordinated attack at other American targets, such as the Pentagon or the White House or other buildings, this indicates that we're facing a new era. We're back to the old uh, state sponsorship, uh, large groups being involved in having the wherewithal and intelligence and the, the ability to pull something like this off. I mean, this is, this is, this is very, very serious. You know, I've been involved throughout the years in these various different exercises that we played uh, where we would talk about an event such as this, such as a biological attack or some other type of thing occurring. Uh, but this type of scenario never really was painted because the type of planning uh, to go into something like this was just thought to be not as possible as the launching of a chemical or a biological, even a small nuclear weapon. I mean, th this is just something that, you know, brings goosebumps to me. And, and, and I've seen everything. I've been through everything. And, 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 and this one top, tops it all in terms of the temerity, in terms of the planning, in terms of what the aftermath is going to be, the shock to the American psyche, to the American public. I mean, think about this. Uh, we try to calm people down by telling them, you know, the chances of you being involved in a terrorist act is very, very small. What do we tell people now when they walk around New York City and look up and see the trade towers 
on, on fire. We see other buildings exploding. We see people crying in the streets. I mean, this is, this is a horrific event, and it's a very, very sad day in, in American history. And, uh, it, Doc, it's, Dr. Kushner, I don't know if you're watching television, but yeah, we are now showing our very first pictures of some of the victims of, <laughs> of, um, right. of this today, and we can see some horrific, what appears to be burns. Yes. Right. Um, some some serious injuries. Uh, again, this is video that we have just gotten in. Yes, I'm, I'm watching it. I can see it. We've also been told that the second tower that was hit by the second plane, which is One World Trade Center, we understand that that tower has actually collapsed at this point. Well, I'm just I'm looking at this picture right now, it. and you cannot see the top of the second tower. That's correct. Um, so, a few moments ago, if you remember, there were just billowing smoke there. We just have to hope that area was completely evacuated. You know, if I might just interject this, uh, I, I was at this, uh, involved in a civil litigation against the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey uh, because uh, I, I re was representing with a team of attorneys who represented two clients who were in the B2 level. And, and the Trade Towers was warned many years in advance that there was a possibility of having a bomb placed in the bottom of the building. And uh, my report showed that the, the construction of that building uh, w w was in such beyond the code that even such a powerful bomb couldn't do the damage. But now looking at these pictures as we speak, it, it, it just, it, I'm choked up looking at it, uh, thinking that uh, this type of risk assessment wasn't there and we didn't have, but how do you guard against something like this? This means that you have to put a, you know, a perimeter around New York in terms of flight pattern, uh, in terms of uh, having jets ready to shoot down planes that are looking that they're going into buildings. I mean. This, this opens up a new, uh, a new level. This is ratcheted up a new level in the annals of, of, of terrorism and what we face here as a country and as a civilization worldwide. I mean, uh, people were looking what was going on in the Middle East and, and not understanding the nature of, of the fear that people were going through on both sides. And now to, this to be visited here in the United States, in, in, you know, the capital of the world, the crosswords of the world, with the symbol of American capitalism and American might just in ruins brings a tear to an eye. I mean, think of um, the humanity that's lost in this type of thing, but think in terms of what it's going to do to us as a country. I mean, what type of procedures will we have to put into place? What protocols will we have to put into place at our airports, at our borders to protect against this? There'll be a human outcry uh, about security that has never existed before in this country. This is just monumental. This is something that happens and you're in history and you don't realize that it, the world is going to change after an event such as this. I can't see America going back to where it was in terms of not looking at security, not looking at the intelligence gathering, not looking at our ability to protect ourselves. This now is on the front page. It removes everything yes. off. Every other story is gone. This is something that is going to be with us uh, in, the, in the decades to come. This, this Dr. Is Kushner, if I might interrupt you, thank you very much. Please, will you stand by, because I, I, I want to ask you some more questions. But we need for those, please stay on the line. The people um, that are just tuning in, we need to, to just reiterate and give them a bit more information here, because there have been a couple of recent developments that we need to tell people about. One of the most startling is the fact that we now only see one tower of the World Trade Center Twin Towers standing. We've gotten word that one World Trade Center has either partially or fully collapsed. Well, it's it's it looks like a ground. partial collapse. Yeah. We, can, we can still see below this the smoke. Is this is actually tape. Okay, this, this is, is actually tape, tape, however, and this is you are now witnessing That's the it. Collapse. That's the right collapse. There it is. Obviously, that structure weakened by the aircraft that, that we saw fly into it, what, uh, over uh, an hour ago now. The second, that was the second tower that was, that was the hit. Second the second one, tower. But it was hit much lower. It was a good 30 stories down, something yes. like that. It was about double the, the, the ways down from the... From, which, the which, other, from the first of the world towers. Which the lower it is, obviously, the more vulnerable it is to have a Absolutely. collapse like now, that. You are, I don't know if you've seen this, Jim. This I is, have. all right, we are looking once again earlier. This, this is about the point where I, too, tuned in yeah. to, uh, to News Channel 4. If you look up in your right-hand side, you will see an aircraft coming into the picture. It'll be there any moment. Right there. There it is. 
Now watch this. Now actually dip behind the first building. And there it is. So it goes around behind that building and comes in uh, from the left side, it, it appears. It crossed sort over the through. Hudson. Right. And we have had eyewitnesses who have watched that aircraft. They told us it appeared to be a good size. They compared it to the size of a shuttle, um, you know, like the Boston or Washington shuttle. And indeed, an aircraft was hijacked in Boston earlier this morning. And the FBI knew that because of some radio transmissions that, that came to them. So. Um, if you think about this theoretically, that may have been the aircraft that then went into that and this tower. And this isn't only New York that's no, under siege this, right this now. was just the first. The, uh, you know, not long after that, the, uh, another commercial airliner crashed into the Pentagon or right next to the Pentagon. That building has been evacuated, of course, in the nation's capital. The U.S. Capitol, the State Department, and the White House have all been evacuated. The Secret Service says that they received a very real threat on the White House today, and now we understand that the, uh, the federal buildings in Newark have been evacuated, and I would imagine that that is taking place pretty much around the country. All planes have also been grounded nationwide by the FAA. Planes are still, or a lot of planes are still being diverted into Westchester Airport right now and, and into Syracuse to make up for, to keep the planes out of the New York area, obviously. But once those people who were headed for New York land in one of those airports, they are not going to get into no. this city anytime for the next few hours. That is certain because uh, virtually all traffic coming into the city has been shut off. Uh, the bridges, the tunnels um, are all closed to incoming traffic and to a lot of outbound traffic. I don't know if anybody is getting out of the city at this point. I did get a report that New Jersey transit trains are still running under the river, so. Okay. Um, and again, if you can get out of town, that probably would be the adv wisest advice at, at this point. Um, most of Lower Manhattan, most of Lower Manhattan has been evacuated at this point. And um, again, the subways are shut down. Look at that, the Lincoln Tunnel at 10.15 in the morning over in uh, Weehawken. Never looks like that this time no, of day. it's completely empty. So again, um, let us bring you up to date on, on the fact that we know nothing about the number of casualties, the number of people who've been injured. We've seen photographs of some of the injuries, recent photographs. What we could see were, appear to be a lot of burns, a mm -hmm. lot of lacerations, that sort of thing. Um, we're waiting for the mayor to hold a press conference so he can uh, bring us up to date on the extent of the human damage, so to speak, in all of this. Uh, during this, uh, the, the period that followed the initial uh, impact on World Trade Center, the FBI did get word, uh, as I understand it, in some sort of coded message, perhaps, that there had been a hijacking, mm -hmm. uh, at least those are the reports, uh, from the plane involved, one of the two planes involved, we presume, uh, that then made its way directly into the World Trade Center tower. And of course we heard President Bush a short time ago call this a terrorist attack. That was before the attack on the Pentagon. Yes. Called this a terrorist attack and promised a full-scale investigation to find out who is responsible and to bring them to justice. Jane, right now uh, we have our Government of Affairs reporter Melissa Russo on the telephone. Melissa, are you there? Uh, I'm standing outside St. Vincent's Hospital right now where the scene is absolutely unbelievable. When I arrived here, um, it was just as the second building explosion happened, and there is what I could describe as chaos in the streets here. There are hundreds of people just in shock, uh, police officers telling people to go home, obviously worried about crowd control. But at the hospital, uh, there has not been much activity in terms of ambulances arriving here, though you might expect there would be. Um, after that last explosion, some, hospital, some ambulances took off and headed down 7th Avenue, which is otherwise closed to traffic. But St. Vincent's is obviously preparing uh, for the possibility of many, many people uh, arriving at their emergency room. They have what looks like a trauma center set up on the street, on the sidewalk of 7th Avenue. Dozens of stretchers, hospital personnel, nurses um, with hospital equipment, IVs. Um, out on the street um, awaiting the inevitable uh, people in need of, of medical care. It's uh, very disturbing. Uh, so, Melissa, what you're telling us is that you have not seen the number of people that you might expect to be there after an explosion of this magnitude. That's right. Um, I've only been here for about, I would say, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, but um, we've seen a couple of ambulances come in. Um, as I said, after that last explosion, um, I saw some more ambulances race out of here and head down 7th Avenue. Um,
but they're obviously preparing for people to be brought here um, on, you know, on full alert. They have, as I said, dozens of nurses, um, <sighs> nurses' aides out on the street outside the ER on 7th Avenue and 12th Street. Stretchers lined up on the street. They're just waiting for, for people to be com uh, coming in, obviously, in, in need of treatment. And we're looking right now, Melissa, at some tape that we saw earlier of a woman uh, being uh, taken for medical treatment. It did appear that she had some burns. This yes. is some very... And we are told um, that, that there have been some patients brought here. They probably arrived before I got here. We don't have numbers. We're waiting for a briefing from the hospital. The uh, public relations person from St. Vincent's Hospital did come downstairs and alert the members of the press who are here that as soon as they have... Uh, an update, they'll, they'll um, bring it to us, but obviously they're overwhelmed with um, preparing for, you know, an, an all-hands uh, situation here at the hospital. Melissa, isn't it, um, isn't it true that the Emergency Management Office of the City of New York is located yes. in the World Trade Center? It's located at 7 World Trade Center, not in one of those two buildings, but of course it crossed my mind as it crossed yours that this is the place that was set up, uh, you know, the nickname for it was the bunker. It was supposed to be a place that would be shielded from any kind of emergency situation where the mayor and top uh, emergency workers would be able to um, get together in case of this type of emergency. Um, I have not spoken to the mayor's office yet this morning. I don't know where they are working. Um, but it is in Seven World Trade Center, which is on the north side of uh, VC Street, on the other side. However, it's very close. I mean, right across the street from from those towers. I would be almost surprised if they felt safe to, to be there. Although, you know, I don't know what it looks like on the ground at, at that part of the city right now. Mm. And right. Melissa, we would assume that what you are seeing in the way of preparedness at St. Vincent's is being repeated at hospitals throughout I, Manhattan. This I would morning. imagine. It, I would imagine it is. Um, I mean, you can only think the worst in this kind of situation. Obviously, hope for the best, but there's certainly. Um, you know, I'm sort of surprised that we're not seeing more ambulances arriving well, that's, here. That's we, we are one of the closer hospitals. I mean, there's New York Downtown Hospital, which is right across the street from City Hall, essentially, in Lower Manhattan. And then we have St. Vincent's, which is here on, on West 12th Street. Um, I am, you're hearing some sirens behind me. Those are some additional police vehicles heading down 7th Avenue right now. Uh, Melissa, yes. if I can interrupt you for a second, uh, I've just there's an urgent on the wire that something has happened at the State Department. The so a source says we don't know yet. We hear it might have been a plane, so there's a possibility now that a plane may have slammed into the State Department in the nation's capital. That, of course, was evacuated about 45 yes. minutes ago. So, um, hopefully, the people who were inside that building have safely um, left. There's also information, Jane, on the uh, plane. Uh, involved perhaps in this incident it appears it might have been an American Airlines flight that was leaving Boston heading to Los Angeles um, I'm you know we're still making uh, you know one way to describe that, that is a gray plane on top and that would be American Airlines um, exactly yeah. so um, again let's go outdoors now to uh, Joe Avalar Joe Avalar because he is on the scene in lower Manhattan uh, well, what we're standing here is we're in Soho we're at the corner of Prince and Worcester Street and what we're seeing is a lot of what's happening around Manhattan right now in lower Manhattan people were in that area and they ran ran as far as they could as fast as they could I've got a group of people right here they were all in offices right close to the World Trade Center is that correct sir that's right uh, right across yeah. the street at 1 130 Liberty Street you heard the explosion, and then what did you do? We heard the explosion, and we didn't know if it was a uh, earthquake or whatever. And uh, they came on the PA system and said it was a bomb, but then we heard it was a plane. So then we went back upstairs because we thought everything was okay. And then uh, we heard we actually didn't see the second plane, but we saw the explosion hit the other tower, and planes just came flying towards us. And that's when you ran. That's when we went to the other side of the building and then waited to hear from the PA system. Then they said they were evacuating everybody. And then we just walked all the way up Broadway and glad we did because the, the whole building came down. Just got out of the area as far right. as possible. And you've been trying to get through on a cell phone too. That's been the other thing people are trying to right. do. Have you gotten out? No, not at all. Some yeah. of us have. Some of you have gotten, you, you just managed to get a call out yeah, on your cell phone. You're yeah, just trying to call friends again. and loved ones. Just wanted to call my husband and let him know that I was all right. <laughs> this is terribly frightening. Oh my God. It's. It's so upsetting to know that there are all those people that, you know, people come in to work early down here, and it's, it's really horrifying. 
You were in work today. You're still in your work clothes. You evacuated along with all your friends here. Yeah, I was with these guys. We were by the glass and we saw huge pieces of uh, flaming debris fall and the building shook. And then, like uh, he said before, we looped around. We went downstairs, went back up, and then we saw the second plane hit. And then shortly thereafter, we uh, evacuated the building. You stopped here. You turned. It's what everybody's doing all over the city. They get to a spot, they turn, and they watch. And you almost have to watch. Yeah, it's surreal. It's like watching a movie. It's, it's surreal and it's and it's horrifying at the same time. What 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 was that? Yeah, that it, that the top of the building. When we turned around, we just saw a big pile in the in the road because it had just fallen down. The whole thing is gone. And now, of course, number two World Trade Center. That's going to go down too. It's it gone. And then what we're looking at, spin around, we can see the picture from, this is from where we're standing. We're a good old 20 blocks or more from the World Trade Center as we're standing here. And you can see the flames. Have, you see where the hole is. And you can see how the hole, the original hole is, which is in the middle of the building. And if you look at it, you can see how the hole has grown. Also, the flames below, maybe 10 floors below now, those flames have spread from the original fire. We've seen with binoculars, there have been people out here with binoculars. They've seen people in the buildings. There are still people in that tower. And screaming through the area. You were now. You were in that. You were in that area. Yes, today. I was. I was on 299 Broadway when I felt the huge vibration. Thought it was an earthquake. Didn't know what it was. People were running across the street, barefooted. Some crying on the floor, almost like a stampede was occurring. Everybody just ran. This is where I'm at now. I don't know how many blocks I ran. I almost caught asthma by the time I stopped. I lost my cell phone. I can't even call my family right now. And. And that's the big thing, of course, all the New Yorkers are trying to do. Everybody who is in that area, everybody who's in the city today is trying to get through either in a cell phone or finding a store or something. I did the same thing, trying to call the family, trying to call a loved one, telling them that you're okay. Talk to someone who was in the building, in, had just gone into one of the World Trade Towers. When it all happened, he said from where he was in the lobby, there was a flush of debris and a flush of fire down one of the elevator shafts. He actually was singed and he was in the lobby. This gentleman here, where are you coming from? That you... uh, I was in the Century 21 building. On so the... you were downtown too? Right. Our office points right at the, uh, the buildings and we're so accustomed to seeing people of all walks of life down in the down in the lobby and everything and, and every day and then all of a sudden this happens at yeah. nine in the morning and fire came out from all sides of the building and to us we thought bombs went off or something but apparently planes uh, went but it's a sad very sad time for America. What we're going to do is we're going to turn back to the to the tower right here we're going to send it back to you and of course what everybody is thinking is that our prayers are with the people who were in that tower. Back to you. Okay thank you Joe. Get an update on the State Department real quick. Uh, apparently it was a car bomb that exploded outside the, the State Department. That's according to senior U.S. Mm -hmm. law enforcement officers. Uh, the State Department had been evacuated uh, previous, apparently, to this bomb. So one can only assume that the people that were in that building got out um, safe and sound. We certainly hope that they did. Uh, let's go to Walter Perez. Um, Walter is downtown in lower manhattan okay now as you can imagine ralph now, as you can imagine it is a pretty frenzied scene out here just a few moments ago i'd say about 20 minutes ago we're not sure exactly what it was we have not confirmed it but something either exploded or fell off the side of the one building that was attacked and caused a massive plume of smoke as we turn left you can see there's a trucks go by that they're spitting off smoke these were the emergency trucks and ambulances that were near the building at the time that that had happened at that point it wasn't so much of a frenzied scenario because people were walking away from the building this entire region has been cordoned off and people who are working in nearby buildings were told to leave and evacuate the area for obvious reasons for safety concerns when that second plume of smoke came up from the ground area people started running people were covered in soot there were people with blood on their shirts uh, rips in their shirts and at this point looking up at the top of the building at a rate of about one every five minutes you see people that are jumping from the top of the building it is an absolutely harrowing scene harrowing scene at this point uh, police officials told us to evacuate the area that we were in. We moved about two blocks further, but the scene is very, very similar. Plumes of smoke all around the area and people not exactly sure what's going on. All the telephone lines are jammed up as people are trying to communicate, not just police to other people, but folks who saw what happened, trying to communicate uh, loved ones and let them know that they're safe. So it's a, a very hectic situation at this point. As we gather more information and we're sure we're settled where we're supposed to stop, we'll get back to you because at this point, police are still not sure where we should be. 
And as you can see, a lot of police activity. They're trying to move the media to a safe area so we can do proper reporting and let everybody know exactly what's going on. For now, back to you. Walter, have they given you any indication? I'm sorry, he can't hear me. All right. Uh, we just we simply do not know who has been hurt and what casualties might have occurred, which is the yeah. information that we are. Uh, I want you to take a look at what's happening yeah. right now. Oh. That is a live picture. That's, World That's a live Center picture, too. That's World Trade Center, too, has just collapsed. That's the second oh my God. to collapse. We are now looking at An the collapse scene. of the second of the World Trade Towers. World Trade Center towers. Um, again, this is something that we oh never dreamed we would witness in our lifetime. Let us tell you that to come into this city right now, you will not be able to. The bridges, the tunnels shut down, subway lines, trains pretty much closed. Um, the New York Stock Exchange. Go. Just a you moment ago, the entire top of the building collapsed. You can see a massive plume of smoke. People are running away from the area. There are firefighters and there are police trying to evacuate the area as quickly as possible. People who are near the area are in an absolute frenzied situation. The entire top of the building just collapsed. You can see the plume of smoke is coming in our direction. Let's get out of here, Ralph. We're going to leave because the smoke is coming right at us. Obviously, this is a devastating They're moment gone. in Look our that. history. They're gone. The World Trade Center is, is no more. What we do wrong? not know at this point. Uh, the extent of injuries or casualties, uh, how many people were in these buildings trying to get out. We've seen some gut-wrenching descriptions, witness uh, accounts of people hanging out of windows, jumping, trying to get to safety. You see the obvious. Look at the plume. All right, let's go to NBC News right now. We are back at 1030 Eastern Time on this Tuesday morning, this horrific, incredible not to be believed Tuesday morning. You are looking at live pictures of the World Trade Center where just a few minutes ago, within the last minute actually, the second Twin Tower collapsed. Just to recap, if you're just joining us, around 8.42 Eastern Time this morning here in New York City, a plane crashed into the right Twin Tower of the World Trade Center about two-thirds of the way up the building, leaving a huge gaping hole, a huge fire, and tons of billowing smoke. About 25 minutes later, a second jet, believed to be a 727, 737 or a 737, some reports of a 757 even. then crashed in the second twin tower. The first plane, incidentally, was en route from Boston, Massachusetts to Los Angeles. Here's the video, I think, of the second plane striking the tower. That's right. We're not sure the origin of that plane, is my understanding. The first plane that caused that hole on the right hand side and the other twin tower was from Boston to LAX to Los Angeles. It was flight 11 American Airlines. We have confirmed that that plane was hijacked. What happened following the hijack, hijacking rather, is unclear. We should note that about an hour after the first collision at the Pentagon, reportedly another plane crashed into the Pentagon which is just outside Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia. All air traffic has been stopped. Government buildings have been evacuated, as have other buildings across the country. The Sears Tower in Chicago was evacuated. You can imagine that other buildings in major cities and small cities around the country are probably being evacuated as well. There's an unconfirmed report of a car bomb at the State Department. We have not been able to pin that down. Uh, there is also, Jim Kloszewski was told, but there was an unconfirmed report of another air hijacking. We share this with you, not in an attempt to in any way exacerbate what is already a terrible situation, but so much has come true today based on these early reports that we want you to have as much information as we can possibly get at the Pentagon. All people outside were told to take cover just moments ago, but Jim Mikloszewski said the skies were clear. There was an unconfirmed report of another hijacking with a plane headed towards Washington. Again, we don't want to sound alarmist, right. but that is something that Mick heard while he was at the Pentagon. We also want to mention that the president is en route from Longboat Key, Florida, where he was there to visit an elementary school to talk about literacy. Obviously, clearly, his agenda has changed dramatically. He will convene a meeting of the National Security 
City Council as soon as he gets home. Colin Powell is also on his way back from Lima, Peru. He was scheduled to be in Bogota, Colombia. And probably not at the White House. They'll probably take him to a safe location. There are a number of them, some in the hills of Virginia, as you know. And my guess is that Air Force One is in the unusual situation of having a fighter plane escort on its way back from Florida today. Well, That's where we stand. Think about the, the, the loss of life that we could have seen this morning. If you think about the fact that when full, the World Trade Centers hold about 50,000 people, no telling how many people were at work before 9 o'clock this morning and then shortly after 9 o'clock in the other tower. But if you look at this picture here, Tom and Katie, at Lower Manhattan, it appears that terrorists have succeeded this time in, in doing what terrorists tried to do back in 1993. This is war. Uh, this is a declaration and an execution of an attack on the United States two of our most conspicuous symbols of the American system of capitalism. The Pentagon, which of course is the headquarters of the most mighty military in the world, was attacked today as well. Uh, the White House has been evacuated. The State Department has been evacuated. Financial markets have been immobilized. All flights taking off after these attacks were grounded. International flights have been uh, sent it to Canada. It turns out it's transatlantic flights transatlantic. only going to Canada now. So there has been great chaos visited upon this country to say nothing, as you pointed out, Matt, so importantly, of the still untold loss of life, and it's going to be horrendous. We don't know yet what the exact numbers are, but we can only tell you by looking at those pictures that you can guess as well as that we can, that there are going to be a lot of people who are not going to be able to escape that. Back in 1993, when the bomb blew up in the basement of the World Trade Center, so many survivors talked about how long it took them, with no power in the elevators, to, to walk down the smoke-filled stairways. And you think about how many people were still trying to escape those buildings when first one and then the second tower collapsed. And of course, the triage unit that has been set up, area hospitals are all receiving victims. And as Matt said, 50,000 capacity when everybody is in the building. But many people at 8.42 a.m. here in New York are at their desk working in their offices. One young man or one man was reached by phone and was asked what is happening there and he said we are blanking dying here not to and mention there was screaming and yelling and pure chaos understandably going on in the there, background there's a picture of lower manhattan ladies and gentlemen the most important city in the world in so many ways and now it has been attacked uh, by terrorists at the World Trade Center, and the damage is beyond our ability to tell you in great detail. Let here's me what, mention that, uh, oh, that... I was going to say, here's what the president said. He canceled an education appearance in Florida. Here's what he said just a short time ago. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families, and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now, if you join me in a moment of silence, That was George W. Bush about an hour ago speaking from Longboat Key, Florida. He is en route to Washington, D.C. We're looking at some pictures on the ground, or we were, of apparently some of the victims. Yes, he is on the ground. Quite extraordinary. This, these are the emergency workers who are coming back. It was just about 10 minutes ago that we described to you the possibility of that North Tower collapsing. About five minutes after we went off the air, it did collapse. Once again, we have no idea at this point the loss of life. I can only tell you there were hundreds of emergency workers down there about five or six blocks. It took probably about, I would say, no more than 50 or 60 seconds for that dust cloud, dust and smoke, to literally make it the five or six blocks up here. 
and begin to envelop us, at which point we started to move out of the way. There were literally dozens and dozens of firemen who were trying to run past us. In fact, our cameraman even put one of the captains in his car and drove him down to a command post. The people who you see here are pretty much all emergency workers. Many of them that I have seen in the last two to three minutes, quite frankly, are coming out of here. And remember this, these are professionals. They're coming out of there looking literally stunned, in shock, many of them, struggling for breath, obviously in serious distress. Breathing problems are the biggest problem for those who manage to make it safely out of that area down below us. You can't see much more than a block south of me right now. And the World Trade Center probably stands about 10 blocks south of where I am at this moment. And as you can see now, the dust is beginning to pick up here. It really depends on which way the wind blows as to whether or not we get heavy dust or not. But at this point, I can tell you that in the first few minutes, emergency workers were trying just basically to get out of there, to survive. You could see that written in their faces. The situation was so desperate, they just wanted to get out of there. Now, many of them are beginning to regroup. A couple of them asked me where their commander might be. They're trying to get together and go back in there and try to take care of the people who obviously are in serious trouble. There's no other way to describe it. The language here, uh, at times, if I slip into language which seems a little melodramatic, uh, forgive me, but this is uh, a circumstance which uh, uh, is very, very difficult to describe in many ways without sounding melodramatic. Certainly in more than 20 years of, of covering horrific events, this is something that I've never seen before. Um, as we say, the emergency workers now beginning to try to gather themselves over there. You can see a police emergency service unit. Uh, they are trying basically now to reestablish some kind of a safe perimeter. And many of the emergency workers basically just happy to be alive. Certainly that picture tells it all. Many of them just happy to be alive at this point, uh, having survived what is an extraordinary event, the collapse of two towers. As we said earlier in our report, 110 stories each. Uh, I will tell you that what fell, what I saw fall, had to be at least 40, 50 stories of that building at first. The skeleton was left at about, I would say, the 50 or 60th floor after the shell, after the uh, structure of the building fell down. The, uh, the skeleton, the steel skeleton, was literally sheaved off, and it took probably about another 30 seconds before the skeleton collapsed into the street. That was the last we saw of the World Trade Center. Uh, and that was maybe 10 minutes ago uh, when those, uh, that final skeleton, the metal skeleton, steel skeleton, collapsed into the street. That was but NBC's Pat Dawson again. He's standing about 10 blocks from where the World Trade Center towers used to stand. You're looking at the collapse of one of those towers right now. We now have an AP News alert out of Pittsburgh. Officials at Somerset County Airport are confirming the crash of a large plane just north of the airport. That's about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Again, officials at Somerset County Airport confirm the crash of a large plane north of that airport, which is located about 80 miles to the southeast of the city of Pittsburgh. We do not know whether that crash of that plane is related to what has become an obvious terrorist attack both here in New York City and in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. Uh, Matt, we just got a late word that uh, State Department security officials are denying those reports of a car bomb at the State Department. Betsy Stewart is at the C Street entrance and also says there is no sign of a car bomb. Betsy Stewart is one of our producers who is very familiar with the uh, State Department. The building has been evacuated. Top officials are still believed to be in the operations center, however. Those are highly secured areas in terms of penetration physically and otherwise. Colin Powell, as Andrea reported earlier, was headed for Lima, Peru, but he's done a U-turn and he's coming back. The president is on his way back. He'll have a National Security Council meeting, we think probably at around 1130 or perhaps around noon. That is likely to take place either at Andrews Air Force Base or in some more secure location. The White House has been evacuated, especially with this report of another plane going down, this time in the Pittsburgh area. There were planes in the air when the order went out that there would be no more takeoffs. So we don't know how much more damage uh, these terrorists had in mind. Let's go to Bob Hager, who is, of course, NBC's uh, aviation expert. Bob, what kind of information are you getting from your sources? Uh, 
Not a lot, Katie, from the FAA. For instance, they are not talking about uh, any possible hijacks. And normally, they can tell when there's a hijack in progress because the, uh, the pilot, uh, the original pilot of the plane, has various buttons that he can push that set off a code and, and tell them that there were hijacks. But maybe as a matter of security, they're not saying anything about that. They did stop uh, all takeoffs in the U.S. at 9 25 this morning and then for pilots that were in the air the question came up what to do about them and they were given some discretion to continue on to their destination so long as it was not the New York or Washington area or divert to an airport if that's what they wanted to do. Uh, I personally I saw the blast at the Pentagon not the blast take place but moments after it I'd been at National Airport trying to get up to New York and you could see that smoke billowing out of the Pentagon. I can give you a little description of what it's like on the streets of Washington because it was quite crowded trying to work my way back here to NBC. Uh, they have now given uh, not only the White House and those key buildings like the U.S. Capitol, but uh, at this point they've given all federal employees the word to leave their offices and get home. Right. So there are traffic jams in Washington. Okay, we, we, Bob, I'm sure you're going to get more information for us momentarily, but first we want to go to Jim Miklaszewski at the Pentagon who has some more information. Mick? Katie, they're still clearing people away from the Pentagon. Uh, still, security forces believe that there may be an, another incoming plane headed in, in the Washington region. But there was a very telling, dramatic moment just a second ago when a U.S. Air Force F-16 flew very low level, did a wide sweeping turn around the Pentagon and back over, the, over Washington. And as one Air Force officer standing near me said, my God, they're now flying air cover over Washington. Uh, a very dramatic moment, a milestone in what Tom has already described as a, as a declaration of war, a uh, terrorist war against the U.S. Can Let's you? go back and show you the pictures of lower Manhattan where the situation only gets worse, not better. That is the financial district of the world. It's also a residential area and a great commercial area. Both twin trade tower buildings now have collapsed onto the ground. There is an untold loss of life. The ripple effect goes on with all the smoke and dust that is spread out across that very densely populated area. It goes down below ground as well as uh, in the high-rise buildings there. There are many residential structures in that area as well. Some heroic rescue workers were down there trying to get people out of the building when first the first building came down and then the second building did as well. Without any sound and looking at this, there is a kind of a surreal quality. But that is the epicenter of a great, great national tragedy and a great loss of life. No question about it this morning. We're talking about people who were hurt, perhaps killed in this blast. Many of them have been brought to area hospitals, including St. Vincent's Hospital. Bob Bazell is there. Bob, what's the latest? Well, Katie, ambulances continue to stream in. Uh, several New York City streets have been closed. Major avenues have been closed off so that ambulances can continue to come in. Uh, in addition, the New York City subway system has now been closed down, and several buildings that were not involved in the World Trade Center area have been shut down, and people have been told to go home. But a lot of them are just wandering aimlessly on the street, many people openly weeping and hugging each other. This is clearly uh, is a time that, as Tom described, is very close to the beginning of a war. And uh, the, But the casualties do keep coming in, burns, smoke inhalation, very severe. And again, uh, all the medical people that I've talked to say this is just the tip of the iceberg. We expect casualties to be coming in all through the night and way into tomorrow and beyond. Bob, if you could just stand by for a moment because we have this report from AP that I'm just simply going to read. A large plane crashed Tuesday morning just north of the Somerset County Airport, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Airport officials said... The plane, believed to be a Boeing 767, crashed around 10 a.m., about eight miles east of Jennerstown, according to County 911 dispatchers, WPXI-TV reported. The crash came the same morning that terrorists crashed two planes into the World Trade Center in New York City and the twin 110-story towers collapsed. Explosions also rocked the Pentagon and the State Department, although that was refuted moments ago, and spread fear across the nation. There was no other immediate details on the Pennsylvania crash, and it was not clear whether the crash was related to the others. Again, that was a report, a bulletin, that was just issued by the Associated Press. You know what is so stunning about all this, Matt and Katie, is that there has been no, no indication whatsoever that this very carefully coordinated massive attack was going to occur. There's been a complete intelligence failure here. Uh, and there will be, obviously, 
down the road a price to pay for that. Well, that's actually not all that surprising, Tom, because we've often talked in the past following every terrorist event about how vulnerable the United States is, and many terrorist experts say how unprepared they are. And the question, of course, is can you ever prepare for an attack like this? Well, the, the, that's true, but we also have people out there who are in listening posts, and we've penetrated these kinds of organizations, but to have this kind of an attack, this sophisticated, this efficient, striking at the heart of the nation's capital, striking at the heart of New York City, now. And if this is true, that this plane went down as a result of this attack, we don't know whether it's the end of it. Right. This is a massively well-coordinated attack of some kind that is nothing short but a, of a declaration of war on this country. And terrorist experts are now saying, and intelligence experts are now saying, that there are very short or very few number of terrorist groups that are capable of this kind of planning and, and a couple of names come to mind and I'm not going to throw them out now because we certainly don't have any reports. Before I go to Jamie Gangel, I just want to say that some of the descriptions coming from eyewitnesses in lower Manhattan of, of these explosions occurring are chilling. One man talked about getting off a PATH train, that's a subway train here in lower Manhattan and looking up at the building after the first explosion and seeing people jump out of the windows. We have no idea how high up, but hearing people on the ground scream each time another person jumped out of a window attempting to get to safety. And then when the second explosion occurred, he felt the heat of the explosion on the back of his neck. Jamie Gangel is our national correspondent. She's joining us now on the phone. Jamie? Matt, you know, speaking of those intelligence officials that you were just mentioning, now finally we can no longer reach on the phone anyone at the CIA. Apparently the CIA has been evacuated. We know the National Security Agency, which is the electronic eavesdropping agency, which is south of Baltimore near Fort Meade, Maryland, that they have been shut down. What we're hearing from both places is that all non-essential personnel have been told to leave. Uh, and I can only imagine that probably they are trying to move some of their operations out of those buildings uh, as well for backup procedure. But in addition to whatever intelligence was or was missed in all of this, we now have uh, perhaps some problems gathering intelligence as those buildings are now being shut down. Right, Jamie, thank you very much. Tom, let's go back and talk about something you mentioned a second ago that is just, it shows the enormity of this situation in addition to what we assume will be horrendous loss of life. All planes in this country have been grounded. I mean, you think about the impact that has, and I mean, is there ever a time we can imagine something like that ever happening before? The most powerful nation in the world, and national security officials and terrorist experts have been saying for some time, a small band of very willful and sophisticated people can bring us to a halt, and they have done just that. There's a psychological terror as a result of all of this, as you can only imagine how it plays out across the country today. People looking in who don't live in New York or live in the nation's capital are wondering what happens around me. Uh, it is hard to overstate the consequences of all of this, and this is just the beginning. Uh, we'll be living with this story and dealing with the consequences of, of it for some time. The United States will change as a result of all of this. We already thought that there was a lot of security in America at the airports and so on, and yet there was a successful hijacking at Boston Airport today, and the consequences of that we're seeing on the screen here this morning. So this is going to change this country profoundly in not just the coming days, but the coming months to say nothing, as you have been saying, Matt, of the horrific loss of life well, on, that we're witnessing. On that subject, you know, and Katie and, and Tom, what I, to complete a, a thought I started before, you both were out at the Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, a much smaller building, and it took rescue workers more than a week to find all the people trapped in that, wreck in, that, in that wreckage. We have a building here that, two buildings of each 110 stories. It's mind-boggling to think of, of what it's going to take over these next days and weeks to find survivors or victims of these explosions. And of course, it continues to be a terrifying situation because there are a number of planes up in the air as this took place and a number of unconfirmed and uh, frightening reports uh, about those planes that we heard earlier from Jim McLeshevsky that somebody had gotten word at the Pentagon that perhaps there is another plane, whether they were talking about the one north of Pittsburgh or it's, it's completely unclear, but, and it's also unclear whether these planes that were en route to a, to a destination have been grounded themselves. In other words, that there were emergency landings or what. I think it's very difficult to get any communication with airports all across the country because they're, I'm sure, complete 
completely chaotic. Katie, you know from your time in Oklahoma City and all the time that you spent with the victims there, um, the psychological effect of all of this on, on this country uh, and how it's going to affect our whole sense of security and, in a way, our sense of innocence about this is Fortress America. It couldn't happen here. We said that about the Murrah Federal Building. We even said it about Columbine High School. This is an incident of a whole different magnitude. I have to say, I've never, ever, I mean, witnessed anything quite as horrific. I hate to keep saying it because we have seen these types of things play out in movies and, you know, in, in worst case scenarios and, and, and in dramatic uh, renditions of this kind of incident, but certainly no one has ever seen this kind of thing unfold and it is really shocking. We, we want to go now on the phone. We have Neil Livingston, who is an expert on terrorism. Mr. Livingston, can you hear me? I can. Hey, you know, we were talking about what it would take in terms of planning and coordination to pull off an attack like this with so many prongs, at least two attacks here in New York City, one in Washington, D.C. We don't know if the crash of that plane outside Pittsburgh is related, but give me an idea of, of how many groups there are in the country that would be capable of something like this. Well, there are very few groups in the world capable of this kind of action, and you have to remember also that we have the people who hijacked these planes for going to a certain death as well, so they uh, were suicide bombers in effect. And that probably suggests that this was not something like the Medellin cartel or, or one of the other groups that uh, has the financial wherewithal and the infrastructure to carry out uh, coordinated attacks. Yeah, I, know. I think that obviously the, the finger of suspicion, and, and we're always very cautious about uh, pointing uh, that in any particular direction, but we have to look to the Middle East, we have to look to Osama bin Laden. We have to look at uh, some uh, uh, Palestinian groups right now. But even in the past when we were talking about Osama bin Laden and his group, there, there have been intelligence experts who've uh, picked up awesome. conversations, transmissions that occurred before an attack to give some kind of indication, even if we didn't understand them till after the attack. Is it unusual that with so many prongs to an attack that, that there wouldn't have been some type of warning through intelligence sources? Well, it's... Um it's a, it's a myth that we always know that these things are coming down. Part of our problem is, and we just had um, uh, a warning go out to our embassies and military bases in the Far East, uh, that could have been a feint, that could have been a diversion. We have so many warnings these days that people, uh, they tend to fade into the background noise unless we have real specific uh, information about it, uh, an upcoming attack. Generally, we don't take uh, uh, action, and these groups are very hard to penetrate. Uh, they're, they're focused with bonds of kinship and people who have known each other for years. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that we didn't know that this was coming. All right. Mr. Livingston, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Benjamin Levy is at the scene near the World Trade Center. Actually, he's going to tell us precisely where he is and what he saw. Benjamin, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, Benjamin? Yes. Hi, uh, it's Katie Couric. Can you tell me where you are and what you have seen or what you are seeing? Well, uh, right now I'm in Lower Manhattan, but I was working, um, I work at the Federal Building uh, behind City Hall. And we were uh, just sitting at our desk about 9 a.m. this morning. We heard a big explosion. Then about five minutes or maybe 10 minutes later, we saw the other plane hit the building, the second tower, and then we just evacuated. And as we started to walk away, uh, we turned around about maybe 15 minutes after we left the building, and the uh, the second tower just disappeared from sight. And I, I tell you, I've never seen anything more horrible in my entire life. Did you see any people, any casualties, Mr. Levy? We uh, <clears throat> we bumped into some to a guy from Tower One, who said that he had a chance to get out of the building uh, after after the uh, the plane hit the first one. He had a chance to get out of the second one, but he said that. Uh, <sighs> He said that people were, were jumping out of the windows to get away from the fire. Where are you now, Benjamin? Uh, I'm, I'm in a, a hair salon in Lower Manhattan talking to you guys. Well, obviously, that was... Uh, and was the whole federal building evacuated, Mr. Levy? Were you yeah, alert? well, we started running out of the building as soon as we saw the, the second explosion. And then uh, I work on the 22nd floor, and as soon as we were down at the bottom, they sounded the alarm, and then they ev announced evacuation, but most of us were already out. How far physically are you actually from the World Trade Center? Right now, or where I work? No, when, when, you, when, when this happened. About six blocks away. Six blocks away. 
and you were able to get out pretty easily and there were no kind of electrical problems in your building as a result of the impact of the fire or anything no, like that? No, we, we got out pretty, pretty good, thank God. And as that whole area down there, the city hall, the uh, world, uh, the federal building, and uh, all the other commercial buildings, they've all been evacuated as well. Well, yeah. As we were leaving, the, the the police were telling all the shop owners to shut their shops and go home. And that must be enveloped by the smoke and dust and everything that we see now, because that co that covers the entire lower end of Manhattan, which is a considerably large area, not only physically, but in terms of the uh, financial networks, the commerce that is done there, a lot of residential areas. Yeah, you could you could smell the smoke. And uh, you could smell it, but it wasn't. We were walking away from it. Benjamin Levy, Benjamin, thanks so much for talking with us. We appreciate it, and we're glad you're safe. Katie, I've got just a little rundown here, if I can, Matt, for just a moment about what's going on around uh, the country. Uh, the State Department officials have been moved into the State Department Training Center in Arlington, Virginia. The state has been evacuated, obviously. In Minneapolis, St. Paul International Airport shut down the IDS Center in downtown Minneapolis, tallest building, evacuated. Georgia, all flights at Hartsfield Atlanta International Airport closed. The CNN Center World Headquarters of Cable News Network was closed to the public in Maryland. Officials are tightening security throughout the state. Of course, that's the home of Andrews Air Force Base. Uh, Navy installations throughout the Hampton Roads, home to the world's largest Navy base, have been placed under in increased security. In Pennsylvania, Philadelphia International Airport has been closed, and of course the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall are being closed as well. In fact, all national monuments, Tom, I believe, have been evacuated right. and, and closed. Right, and California, the state has been put on the highest alert. Uh, they're on tactical alert in Los Angeles. The Department of Energy's Nuclear Weapons and Research Complex in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, put under heightened security. It is now coming up on uh, 10... 59 East Coast time. We'll, we'll give you a recap of what we've seen so far in just a moment. Just a, a quick note from one of the hospitals downtown in New York City where they say that hundreds of people have been burned from head to toe. This is from Dr. Steve, Stephen Stern at St. Vincent's Hospital in Greenwich Village. About 50 or 60 doctors and nurses standing by in scrubs. The entire entrance to the emergency room was lined with stretchers covered with white sheets. Doctors said the victims mostly had burns. Of course, they're being treated in a number of area hospitals, including St. Vincent's, NYU. Downtown is just about five minutes away. As, an, as a spokesperson told us earlier, they've had a lot of experience dealing with problems at the World Trade Center from that February terrorist bombing in 1993. And uh, obviously, they have all been mobilized, and emergency crews are working feverishly outside the World Trade Center.